Yo, what's up, guys? Okay, so, again, 2019, we're doing this thing, the True Seeker Podcast. Let me know in the, in the live stream. Some people are saying that uh, you guys can't hear the intro audio, but you can hear me. So, you know, if you can hear me, just let me know. Because I'm about to ramble. We're about to go in. We're about to get it in. Um. So, yeah, let me know in the chat if you guys can hear me. Also, want to let everybody know that I'm trying something new for this episode just to see what's up. Um, I enabled media sharing for everyone who donates. If you donate to the stream, you can pick a YouTube video to play a certain segment out of, and it'll let you, I I guess, feature it and play it on the screen during the podcast. And I guess, uh, force me to give commentary on it or something. I don't know. I, I enabled it. We'll see if it works. If anybody wants to try it out, that link is in the description as well. So maybe it'll be uh, a curveball thrown my way, but, uh, check it out just see what's up um moving forward 2019 man a lot to talk about a lot to get into uh 2018 was was uh nothing short of a blessing 2018 was beautiful got so much accomplished uh did did so much um in in 2018 talked to so many really cool people on this podcast um Man, if I was I, I, in when I did the the last year in review, I just kind of went through each podcast and gave commentary on the previous hundred, and I'm about there now with the year in, just like last year. So um, I don't know if I'm gonna do that. That took a really long time, and uh, I had to stretch it out between two episodes. But anyway, I uh, talked to some really cool people, and I got a lot more really cool people lined up. I just booked a. Uh, uh, podcast for next Wednesday night with a guy I used to listen to when I was a teenager. He was in a Christian rock band called These Five Down, Nathan Bowman, I believe his last name is. And uh, I'm going to have him on next Wednesday night. So we're going to do an impromptu um, podcast after the Christy Lee show that we do on her tap in, tune in. So a lot more coming up. Um, I'm, I'm booked all the way till February. So we'll see what's up with that. Uh, talk about a lot of this new stuff that's going on. I want to say a huge thank you again, man, to everybody who is supporting my podcast, everybody who's supporting my music and who believes in the work that I'm bringing to the table um, via via Patreon, man. Thank you guys for the support, the continued support, no matter what level that you've signed up for. Thank you guys um, for doing that. I could not do this without you. This is a listener uh funded show listener support it so uh, i want to give a huge shout out to everybody who's been supporting riding with me from the beginning all the newcomers who have just coming on uh the new people listening to the podcast i uh, just want to welcome you to the to the fold to the family the new people in our discord we're just all about growth man and i really do believe the kingdom is about growth so it's living it's moving it's breathing so um shout out to some of the newest patrons within i say the last week but the last day or so Shout out to Jeremy Smith. God bless you, Jeremy. Thank you for coming aboard. Debbie George, God bless you as well. And welcome to the fold. Thank you for believing in the work and going on this journey with us. Um, Just released a new album, January the 1st, my EP, Colors, seven song EP, um, one song for each chakra to um, represent or just be inspired by that chakra. Getting some good feedback already. Good feedback on the Colors EP as well as the, uh, the the Chakra Meditation and the Guided Throne Room Meditations that I've put out. I got a lot more in store when it comes to doing those meditations. I got a bunch of ideas and um, I don't want to just start pushing it out and cramming it out here. Buy this, buy this, buy this. So I want to make sure it's kind of just, uh, I guess, in a, keeping it at a steady pace even though I've got a created i don't know about pushing it out back to back to back because just the one thing about creating it man and just doing music or whatever it is you'll put you'll put out one uh song even and um and your youtube subscribers or your immediate fan base or whatever will hear it but they won't get a chance to uh you, you you'll be ready to move on to the next song or the next album and you're not even finished promoting that other one that is a huge uh dilemma for underground artists to uh to come out with like there should be a whole marketing plan and marketing scheme um i run into it thankfully i have a decent sized fan base that people do get to appreciate it and listen to it before i move on to something that's cool but it's 
man, I'm even like my work from 2015. I don't need, I feel like I should be still promoting that actively without even moving on to any other material, but there's just so much more that I'm, that I'm working on and pushing out there. So that's why, uh, you know, creating community, um, sharing each other's work, even for those who can't support what I do via Patreon financially, you can always click that share button. You can always opt in to some of the different affiliate links and stuff like that to su to support and promote what we're doing here. Um, but yeah, artists are doing it, man. And I hate it. I'm glad that I, like I said, I have a, 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 a small fan base, you know, people get to kind of glory in that work with you and you can put it out and share it to all the links and the people who want it, get it. Um, that's there. But then again, those up and coming people, even friends of mine who will put out work and, uh, and their promo game is not the greatest, you know, they got really good material, um, a really good album videos or whatever, you know, 10 people buy their albums and they're moving on to the next one, you know, and I really hate that. And, um, for an underground unsigned artist, I usually would give myself two months to promote a project on a, on a pre-order. I didn't do that on this one. I've got so much art flowing out of me so much going on i've been promoting it via patreon like i've been like glorying with those guys who are kind of helping fund the project so they've been listening to this stuff for months so even when it, it's time to come out and promote it to the general public um i would usually give myself two month a two month window to get out as much videos as much promo stuff out there interviews all of that kind of stuff to promote it to sell as many pre-orders as i could because that's like the biggest um um you know sum of money that you're going to get from your music is your pre-orders and so i didn't really do that this time i just uh you know i just put it out after <laughs> when it was ready i put it out you know uh january the first and maybe that's why i would have you know put it pushed it back two months maybe to february or something and just try to sell as many as I could and just get into marketing mode. I mean, that's what I've done on past projects that have allowed me to sell a decent amount of um, pre-orders, but uh, I didn't do that on this one. I just put it out and, you know, you know, the cards may fall wherever, but I'm still getting feedback. Um, but I hate it for those people who aren't, you know, they, they don't have a marketing plan. They just release it and just expect it to be out there. Then they, you get bored with it. Um, you get better with the more material you put out, you get better at rapping, you get better at making videos or whatever. And that stuff falls on the back burner, you know, and, uh, and you keep moving and you forget about the old, old stuff. You can't promote everything. Like if you have a catalog, like you got stuff that you did, like I said, me 2015, that I still feel is relevant in one of the best albums of 2015 that, um, you know, it's definitely went um, overlooked just because of we don't have the right marketing and stuff. And if you guys were here uh, on the last podcast I did uh, about the near death experience, the atheist who found God, um, she is like up to par with her marketing. She wrote a book. She said, anybody can write a book. And it's like, yeah, you all have a book within you. All of most of your lives would make a great movie, would make a great book. You have wisdom and insight that you want to bring out, bring to the table. Um, but once it's out, what do you do with it? How do you market it? Because if you don't, you got six people who bought that book. It's something that took you six months to create or a year, three years, whatever it is, how long it took you, um, six people hear it. And, and so we need to find that team. We need to find that core group of people that we can work with. Even if you have to spend money on marketing, whether it's Facebook ads or whether it's a marketing firm that you can find. Uh, someone in that niche or whatever buy ad space on on websites um i've done it you know and it's all in it's all an experiment at this point because we don't have a lot of people being open and honest about how to do this what does this look like hey this is effective you can watch a lot of youtube videos um a lot of time that's like backhanded advice because they're trying to get you to opt in to something um with that, and they just give you a piece of it and try to make you, you know, opt into their course. But hey, um, if if they if they go all the way in on the course, then it's worth it. So I'm I'm going to be working on something as well. Um, I get a lot of messages, and it's just been in the spirit. People wanting to know how do I do this? How do I, um, you know, do a podcast like this? How do I um, set it up with these cool colors? And how do you? Where do you send it? How do you get on iTunes? 
all of that stuff. And I'm working on right now just a master course on showing you guys through video everything that I do. Um, it's going to be an all-inclusive thing. It's going to be it's really going to be a master course on even branding your SEO, getting in the in, in the search engines with your podcast, getting organic views, um, getting uh, views to your product, to your music, to your podcast, your, your videos on YouTube, whatever it is, organically by utilizing Google SEO in a search engine. So I'm going to be, uh, you know, stuff that's taken me years to learn. I'm going to do a course on it and put it out in a video format for those of you who want to do it and you can approach it and apply it to anything that you're trying to bring to the table hopefully in 2015 those of you who are already doing something and you're already in a niche you're already into marketing you're already into spiritual healing and having having your own business or whatever there's still tools that you can utilize and i'm going to show you what i do on the back end that that works and the stuff that doesn't work stay away from um and I'm, I'm that's going to be out really soon. So you guys will get all those updates if you're subscribed on the on the website. So I'm going to uh, talk about 2019. I'm going to talk about uh, moving forward, some motivation on what what um what what we need to to be successful in our niche and and successful in what we're bringing to the table. Being successful spiritually, like how can you thrive in uh, moving from 2018 to 2019, how can you thrive in that and not just exist, not just survive? And so I really believe that, man, um, writing down goals, writing down the vision, even we talk about prophesying over yourself, prophesying over your vision that, uh, know that you're doing what you were put here to do, what you're destined to do, what God created you to do versus just existing. And if you're listening to this on the job site, you know, not everybody feels that way. Some people love their jobs. They get to, they've kind of given up on the pipe dream and they're, they're, they've transitioned to a place where they're comfortable on their job. That's good too. But if you have a side hustle, if you have a side uh, niche, you know, I, w- I was interviewed in, in that magazine, uh, five to nine zine. So not what you're doing from your five to nine, for your regular bread and butter, but what do you do when you get off work? What is it that you're thinking about at work? Like, I think that's the thing we need to try to be pursuing for a living, to spend 40 hours a week doing what you love for a living, the five to nine when you get off work. So they interviewed me and I did a, uh, they did a whole spread on me in that, that magazine. So y'all go to that website, check out that. It's really cool. But, um, I really think that that's what we're supposed to be doing. What makes our heart tick and people have transitioned you know they've and they've looked at it and they've come to terms that hey this is a pipe dream and they are content they are happy where they are whether it be bagging groceries whether it be um framing houses painting for a living carpentry whatever they love it they have got they've gotten to a place where they love that but this is for those who you have this side niche when you get off of work but the thing the thing you're thinking about at work, what is it? Is it video games? Is it gaming? Like while you're at work, your mind is somewhere else, you know? You, we're in a place now where you can get paid to play video games all day. If you can tell jokes, if you can be entertaining and you can market yourself right. I have friends who are gaming for a living. They've got successful Twitch channels. They're gaming. If that's what you want, if that's your heart's desire, that's what makes your heart heart uh, tick. Pursue it. If it's a podcast, if 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 you're listening to podcasts while you're working, and you're like, man, I could do that. I want to do that. Pursue it. Whatever it is, man, that you know you're supposed to be doing. If it's the healing arts, man. If you want to um, help people find inner healing, lead people through deliverance dealing with childhood trauma, uh, creating music, something different that you can bring to the table that is going to help people pursue it. Put something in the earth, put a seed in the earth, whatever it is, you got to do something. And I've, I'm, I sound redundant with this, but I'm going to keep saying it because it's very practical. The spirituality, the going within, um, getting the, the, the vision and traveling the ethers in the dream state, and then going back to the nine to five uh, back in groceries, that's not fun. 
that should uh we talked about the, even that being linked to depression going on psilocybin and uh esoteric uh, uh psychedelic journeys and then coming back to the mundane life that you just kind of loathe like you have to be able to kind of take that and uh and use it as fuel and not just get stuck in there not grow weary and well doing but use that stuff as fuel in 2019 today's a good day to start um there's things in your life that you can't take with you to the next level let's get that straight there's people in your life who won't go to the next level with you they're holding you back you're you're still seeking for man's approval there's things you got to let go there's addictions you got to let go of maybe it's soda maybe soda can't go with you into 2019 maybe pornography addiction can't go with you into 2019 where you're headed there's places that god has planned for you that alcohol can't go with you there your marijuana addiction can't go with you in 2019 there has to be a standard moving forward you can't just keep doing the same thing over and over and expect different results they said that's the definition of insanity to keep doing the same thing and hoping that it changes you got to change something you got to change your surroundings you got to change your vision you got to change your circle of friends your circle of influence what are you listening to what are you ingesting what type of music a certain music you can't take with you in 2019 you got to leave it at the door moving forward I'm telling you it's a good time to start right now even if you know it's three days in you feel like you've missed the you know the new year thing start now it even if you you fail even if you you uh you know i'm saying keep it moving two weeks three weeks three months and you fail keep it moving because consistency is what's going to pay off consistency in it keep working out oh i missed a week i didn't work out all week and you just loathe in it you just sit in it you know, I was talking about last night on Christy Lee's show, like there was a time where I was trying to eat vegetarian and um, I was going like three months almost and I slipped up one time and ate chicken and uh, that's all we had to eat. We were, I took the kids out to go see a movie and I took them to eat chicken and I was hungry so I ate some and then I gave up after that one time. That was three years ago. I was up. Oh, well, already messed up. I had a, you know, I was on three months, three months straight. And I gave up. So you just loathe in it. So now start again. Try it again. Today, you're going to mess up. You're going to mess up. But what the scripture says that the righteous fall seven times, but they get back up. The saint is just a sinner who fell down and got up. You got to keep getting up as part of the learning process experience we learn through experience you learn that if you touch that stove and it's hot don't touch it again it's going to burn you you learn that if you have friends in your life who have a certain type of characteristic about themselves they're snakes they might bring you down stay away from those type of people why are you attracting those type of people into your life ask yourself that moving forward into 2019 there are things that you cannot take with you moving forward um, I'm going to go back and forth by just talking about this and I'm going to jump in this chat too and just see what people are talking about. So yeah, shout out to everybody holding us down in the live stream. Um, Jeremy Pick, Chris Garner, John Santiago, uh, Jose, uh, Adam, uh, Home Sauce, my brother, Astrid, my sister, everybody holding us down. Adam Starcy Bay, Monica Hess, my good friend, uh, Adriana Ortiz. Hey friend, how are you? Jacob Bakta, what's up? And uh, yeah, everybody else who's listening, who hasn't commented, let me know you're here, man. Comment in the stream. Um, let's see here. Doo, doo, doo. So Vinny says the dope idea for the seven colors with the seven shocker. Thank you, Vinny. Um, Astrid says 333 is lit, man. I love that album. Yeah. That's one reason I have um, a 333 song as my intro on, on for the podcast. You don't know how many people who like watch the Jordan Maxwell interviews or the big interviews that get, you know, almost a hundred thousand views on YouTube. I'm 
really itching towards the, the first hundred thousand uh, view video um, with that one. But uh, you know, people ask, "Hey, wh who sings this intro song? What song is that?" So I'm able to tell them uh, what song it is, and they go and buy the album. So anyway, uh, shout out to Justin Caldwell. Um, Adam Starseed says, "Colors in it is an awesome album. I shared out a YouTube link for it, promoting brothers and sisters is good uh, key to good marketing." Yeah, man, and we're Adam. We're gonna um, we're gonna have to get uh, serious about this marketing too. We're gonna have to get serious about uh, sharing some stuff. And I know that um, I'm talking about it. I have the vision. I'm gonna be the one to set it up. So all of you uh, spiritual entrepreneurs, you have a product you need to get out there, but there's seven people buying your product there's seven people watching we're gonna we're gonna have to get to together whether it's starting a network whether it's uh like a morning plan of of getting stuff together to share out and not be afraid to share your platform is a is a big thing especially coming from the christian church like that was a thing that there is a no-no they wouldn't they were are protective of that platform and in a sense you should be but i'm telling you networking is key I mean, even if we're networking with smaller channels who have seven viewers, that's seven new people that if I go on there and do an interview, um, if someone shares my podcast out with their seven viewers, there's a potential that I have seven new fans. That's part of paying for promotion, uh, paying to play early on. You know, when I got with LCOB, the Lost Children of Babylon, I was a... a, a corny white gospel rapper uh, those and i was wanting to get into the esoteric hip-hop those guys are like way beyond me already established a huge fan base i had to pay those guys for features early on i had to pay them to get on my album they have no idea who i am and so i would pay them and then the goal in paying them is look bring forth good content because when their fans which is a lot of fans are itching for new material they're going to hear this new song rasul allah featuring Truth Seeker, Cosmic Crusader featuring Truth Seeker, Atma featuring Truth Seeker. Their fans are itching for new material, and the goal is to blow them out the water. The, the goal is to do better than them, to bring something that you haven't heard to the table so that once I pay for that promo, once I pay for that feature, that I'm going to be able to make that money back. I'm going to be able to tap in and infiltrate your fan base. I did it. Cost me a few hundred bucks cost me a lot of consistency. I'm still consistency, consistent, even after a lot of those people, they've even fallen off over the years and I'm still going. And I'm the only thing that looks like some kind of LCOB at some part, at some point. So anyway, and, and we talk about it now. I even mentioned LCOB. I've used that as like a catapult. And, um, and a lot of my fan base don't even know who they are now at this point. Like I, I, I'll, I'll go on, I've done interviews early on name dropping those guys thinking that, uh, you know, I was, you know, name dropping the kind of some uh, clout or whatever. But and they're like, who is and I, have, I have to look them up. So I'm like plugging those guys and promoting them and people haven't even heard of them. You know, so there's like a lot of my fan base and a lot of interviews I've done. People don't even know who they are, but I still pay homage. I still, uh, you know, what I'm saying talk about the process and, and my roots and where I come from. And I love I still listen to old LC. That's all I listen to old LCLB music, uh, 90s music. Now, I think their Equividium came out, they said in 99, I think it was, or early 2000s. And that, that album blows like anything that, that you you can hear today out the water. So um, it's about networking. It's about networking, not be scared to share your platform, not be scared to sell yourself as far as sending emails, going on other people's shows. You have something to offer people and you have to be confident in that. If you don't if you don't know who you are, you don't know what you are, you don't know what you have to offer and bring to the table, well it's going to be a um it's going to be a it's going to be a long road for you. But you have to be confident in what you have that God has given you to contribute to humanity, to change the world. Work hard, as Jeremy Pick says, and uh and you'll do great things. Chris Garner says, spiritual alchemy and awaken the fire are still so dope. I know, man, right? Even that, you know, that's even before 333, man. I'm like, I could still, and that's a good thing for me, man, because like, you know, my early gospel music, I wouldn't, I don't want to be caught dead promoting a lot of that stuff. Now, there's some gems in that, right? But um, that's so, just this place of moving into that style, stylistically and 
uh, the concepts of those albums, I I would still feel comfortable promoting Awaken the Fire as it's a new release. As it's a new release, like today, I still feel confident, even though I've grown, I've gotten a lot better. I understand my voice a lot better and techniques that I do while I'm recording stylistically. There's so much more that I can bring to the table and and, and like the you know, singing with, with the new music. There's just so much in there. Um, but I still feel confident promoting that, which I recorded probably most of it in 2011, 2011 and 2012. So uh, moving in this place where the work you're bringing to the table is um, it has longevity. You can keep promoting it. I try and, and people people grow weary and well doing. They get tired of their work. Like I love my album Seer. It just come out in what April. But I'm all I've got another album Colors. I'm doing more stuff. I need to keep, keep promoting it. But I'm I'm good with it. But you can only do so much. You're gonna have so many offers that you're putting out because there's new. That's a, that's a problem with it, man. But you just want to have everything available. But if you're consistent and and creating timeless art. Uh, bringing something to the table, you're going to eventually develop a catalog to where, look, I got all this stuff. I got seven albums of esoteric mysticism and spirituality that will blow your mind and take you to another realm. I have seven albums or so, six albums, whatever it is of that style. We got a beautiful podcast. We've got so many interviews with people that'll take you on a journey as well, you know, um, guided meditations that I'm doing. And then you have an arsenal. You have to stay consistent. I'm at like 200 episodes. And if I wouldn't have been faithful with the first 10 or the first 20 or the first 50, I wouldn't, if I wouldn't have kept going, I, I wouldn't be there. If I wouldn't have kept at the music and even the backlash and the push and, and, and the pushback and things like that, you have to be consistent. And eventually you have a whole arsenal. Those of you watching the, the meditation, I got some physical copies printed out of the throne room meditation. I'll probably get some physical copies too of the, uh, the chakra meditation that I have, but these are, uh, this is really cool, man. This is real. This whole concept of, of creating these, these meditations, uh, are just beautiful. It just takes the, uh, it takes the music and the, uh, the, um, the reason I do music and, and the gratification behind the music to another level where it's able to take you on a journey and it has the ability to change your life. And this is a 15 minute, 17 minute meditation that uh, is an encounter with God in the, in the throne room of heaven where you meet angels and you uh, hired voice actors to come in and play certain p parts. And it's just beautiful. And um, right now it's um, it's available via Gumroad for digital download. Um, I want to eventually move to a place where I can put this out for free because um, everybody needs to hear it. So, um, yeah, if I put everything out for free, then I go back to driving the truck and uh, we're not doing that. Can't go backward moving forward. But the thing is, like people, you know, people, if 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 you believe in something, you're going to support it, you know, and then I watch, you know, shout out to John Santiago, you know, watched your your episode I rocked the John Santiago t-shirt the other day. I got it right over here um, for his podcast. But talking about how people don't support you. Like the people who you think are going to support you. Let's just get that. That's weird. You know what I'm saying? Like you have these people in your life who were kind of there with you on the journey. But then once you plateau off or once you rise to the next level and, and they are, are, are left at another level, they kind of they kind of despise you. They say, hold on, get back down here with us. Come back down here. So there's a reason they're not supporting you. It's just not, oh, I don't have the money. There's a reason. There's jealousy. There's envy. A lot of that stuff comes into play. You have to deal with it. With elevation, you're always going to have to deal with it. I'm telling you, moving forward, 2019, there's things that you're going to bypass certain things. And in, in, in those things, there's people in those things. Um, but you think that the people who... um who you've come up with would support you. And it's strangers, man. It's strangers. It blows my mind. It blows my mind that I have complete strangers who have partnered with me, who believe in my work. It blows my mind. God bless her faith. But I have a friend of mine, 
um, who's been listening to the podcast and she's just believing in, 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 in the ministry and what I'm bringing to the table. And she believes in sewing and she wants to support the podcast has done wonders for her life. This lady was homeless, man. This lady was homeless was, and she wanted to support and she signed up on Patreon and uh, messaged me and said, Hey, I'm, I'm without a home right now, but I believe in your work. And, and um, shout out to Jesse Lee, man. Um, but that blows my mind that my homies who are making a, who are crushing it with money financially, they don't, they don't support. They're like, Oh, you know, but a homeless lady on the other side of the freaking uh, country believes in your work and is going to support and make that sacrifice. I believe that God answers faith. I really do. I will say this. She's not homeless anymore. God blessed her and uh, is blessing her. So shout out to my friend, Jesse Lee for, for joining. But I, I just see that you know, it comes in, in the weirdest places. You wouldn't, you would never imagine people who don't know you. If, if you're true about the art, if you're true about what you're bringing to the table, it's going, it's going to get out there. And it's not even about the numbers anymore. Like we need to market. We need to, to, um, to try to get out there to new listeners, whether it's our podcast or our music or your healing, healing ministry, whatever it is, you need to get it in front of eyes. You do. Um, but it's not about the numbers, man. It is quality over quantity. And at the end of the day, the, I believe the people, even for that season, the people who are supposed to listen, the people who are supposed to support, who are supposed to find your work in that season, they're going to find it. And there's a peace in that, you know, that uh, the servants of the Lord must not strive. Because if you do get caught up in numbers, it w- it's not a good thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you start placating to the numbers. You start doing things differently for the numbers. And uh, you f- start finding yourself, um, you know, your your the uh, your path and your trajectory changing. And so I guess that kind of leads us to what I titled this this podcast, and it's talking about choices, Bandersnatch, the Black Mirror episode that uh, just came out on Netflix. I want I, I mentioned this at the end of the podcast the other day, but I really feel like um, and this is just my discretion. I feel like I don't know if that, how healthy that episode is for mentally unstable people. Like people who are severely schizophrenic, who are on medication and things like that. There's there's some uh, discrepancy there. If that's you, if you're struggling with holding on to reality, that might not be a good episode. And I'll just say that disclaimer before I move forward because it is pretty deep. Um, but it deals with um, these different timelines that exist and whatever choice you do in this life affects what happens tomorrow. Um, that's what the, the, the show is about. And you're actually um, controlling the person in the movie. You're controlling, you're picking their choices. You pick what music they listen to. You pick what cereal they eat. You pick whether they get mad and snap on somebody. If they punch the desk or punch the computer like you and it changes everything so you have to like pick the right choices as you're going and sometimes you pick the wrong choice which I didn't like at first until it was just and you had to go back and reset and try to make the right choice and I think that that was just showing you the fact that there are these different timelines and so most of us are on default and we're just in a place right now off of choices that we made when we were children choices that maybe our parents made for us or whatever the case is. And we're at jobs that we just needed a job at the time. We put in a random application and we've been there six years, 10 years. And you're like, man, time is flying and I'm stuck at this job. That's how I felt. You know, I'll, and it would be long days and I'll be delivering stuff and walking up to customers, holding car parts. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, how did I, this is, what am, and I got I still got a long day ahead of me or even early. And it's just this weird when I was talking about the consciousness, the you that's making those decisions from behind the eyes, that you that's conscious without the body. And you're like, man, if I made choices to get here, maybe I can make choices to get somewhere else. Maybe I can put in another application. 
Maybe I can send an email. Maybe I can be a guest on the Truth Seeker podcast and and people find out about what I do, about what I bring to the table. Maybe. Maybe I can email so-and-so. Maybe I can collaborate with this guy. And then you find out that enough of those maybes come and then you start acting on those maybes and it changes the course of your life. Bandersnatch is a really deep episode, um, but it's talking about free will and the power of choice. And so there's, it, it gets into psychedelics. It gets into uh, time is, is a construct. And eventually, I don't know if I want to give it all away, but the, you're making choices for the guy. And he feels like he's on this path of default where he's not even making choices for himself in the movie. Well, he's not making choices for himself. You're making the choices for him. He knows somebody's out there controlling him. It's you sitting at home on Netflix. I'm going to stop it there. It is a, I wanted to make sure I plugged that because that's a, it's a gym out there that uh, I think a lot of people need to check out if you're looking for something good. Um, a lot of deep symbolism in that, in that show too. The lion, the bandersnatch, the uh, um, understanding what that, what, what even that is. The bandersnatch is like the, the cat, the, uh, the, the big enemy cat that was in the uh, Alice in Wonderland. And then he goes on an LSD trip and he meets this cat like lion being who's like the spirit of fear. It's a deep show. I don't want to give too much away. Um, moving into 2019, there's things that you're done that you, that you're doing that you got to stop doing. Like I said, pornography, addiction, alcoholism, drug addiction. You can't take that with you. Leave it at the door, whatever you got to do to do it. Now, there's a lot of things in place, hopefully, that just off of inspiration, hopefully just off of drive and determination that you will turn from the things that are killing you to move forward. You have to let go of what's good in order to receive what's best. The things that we're doing create a vibration. The music, the podcast, the meditations, the healing, it creates a vibration. It changes the atmosphere it changes the way you think it changes the type of people that interact with you the type of people that come around it literally changes the atmosphere we call it the vibration it changes the vibration of of the of the atmosphere of people's lives it has that power you have that power with your words that create so when you're going forth and doing good works man trying to you know heal people creating something beautiful in the earth creating and hopefully it's something beautiful that has helped it put here to help people and to inspire people right it changes the way people react to you and around you and it's good it feels beautiful it's euphoric you don't believe it New age mumbo jumbo. What happens when you're out there doing wickedness in the earth? What type of mindset do you have when you do wickedness? What type of mindset do you have when you're lying to everyone and you can't look nobody in the eye? What type of mindset do you have when you're robbing people or stealing from people? What type of mindset do you have when you're cheating on your spouse What type of mindset do you have when you're doing wickedness? What type of repercussions come from that mindset? What type of people are looking to repay you for the evil you've done, the karma in that in that mindset? It's bad. It's demonic. You start robbing people, stealing, doing drugs, feeding that stuff like wherever you were, wherever you are, when God finds you. You know that there's a difference. You know that what it feels like to do that versus what it feels like to lead someone in a baptism, what it feels like to pray for someone, what it helps to feed the hungry, feed the homeless. You've been taking your whole life what it feels like to give back. Man, do those good works. When the Bible is talking about in in Acts chapter 10 it's talking about uh, Cornelius 
who um, was a Gentile of the Italian band. He wasn't an Israelite. And so he, um, it says that God seen him for the alms that he was doing, the good works, his conscience, what he was doing. And it came up as an aroma before God. And God rewarded him and, and chose him to go out and do something great because he knew he can trust him with it. And I've talked about this on many occasions, like God can't trust you with $50. How's God going to trust you with 5,000 or 500, whatever, 5 million, whatever your vision is. You have to be, you have to be shown faithful with the few to become the ruler over more. You can't, you can't handle seven fans. How you going <laughs> to handle 70, 7,000? You get this God complex. You know, you got people looking up to you. You got women inboxing you. Like, what are you? You can't handle it. You got to you got to show yourself approved, man. You got to do the right thing. And I'm telling you, it is God who opens the door. It is God who blesses. It is God who holds back and takes away. And the scriptures when it says like Jesus is able to open up doors that no man can open and shut doors that no man can close. Like I really believe that in the supernatural. I I believe that financially i believe that uh, as far as blessing your business or blessing your your album or your 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 podcast whatever it is you have to get get it right with, with the one you're doing a good job tricking everybody around you you're not doing that great trick in him he knows you have to be open and honest show vulnerability with your friends with your family and definitely with god and that's where everything flows from being open and honest because if you tell everybody what's going on if you're open if you're in the light as he is in the light you don't have nothing to hide you don't have to cover your tracks you don't have to remember the lie you tell lies to cover up other lies you know all of this and you may not be there right now many of you have come from that i've definitely come from that but moving forward there's things that you can't take with you in 2019 Whatever it is on a, on a personal level, on a spiritual level, those things that you're doing, those things that you want to do, you got to start. And sometimes the journey is, it just seems too big. The vision is too scary. They say if, you, uh, if your dream doesn't scare you, you need a new dream. One day, your dream scares you, but it motivates you. I'm, we're doing great things in the earth. We're about to do even more things in the earth. That's how I feel. Then other days, I'm bombarded with it like, oh, where do I start? You got this vision, man. You don't even know where to start because it's so big. Here's the word of the Lord. This is what God spoke to me in the, in the secret place a couple of weeks ago. I shared this on the School of the Mystics, but I think this is for everybody that's applicable. Prophetically, um, whatever vision you have, especially to the analytical mind, don't try to get the full picture. Don't try to articulate everything until you move forward. It's been it's been a downfall for me in the past that I want to make sure I have everything together before I move forward. Even if it's a teaching, if it's a teaching video, you know, I've put out several and I wanted to have everything. I wanted to kind of know what it looked like before I jumped in it and, and so that I can craft it and mold it and, and go. But the word of the Lord is that he'll give it to you as you're creating it. As you begin to write it down, whether it's a book, whether it's a YouTube video, whether it's a business plan, a model, you want to have the whole model before you kind of step out. Step out. As you're writing it, more is going to come. Get out what you have. More is going to come. Just continue to get in the flow. You want to have it all in here. You'll, you, if you have it all in, you're going you're gonna to miss details. You're going to forget things. Write it down. Just get it out somehow and the rest will come. It's going to continue to flow. That's the word of the Lord. And it's helped me. It really has because I want to have it all figured out. Writing a song, writing, doing this, creating something. You want to have the bigger picture. You're especially if you're a perfectionist. You don't want to half step something. You don't want to barely do something. Start it, man. Whatever it is. Create it. The rest is going to come. The rest is going to come. It's going to continue to flow. Don't get stuck. Tap into the flow state. Let it all come. Let it all keep coming. 
And so the Lord spoke that to me. I wanted to share that. I, I know that's for somebody. It's definitely for me. Um, as you create it, I'll give it to you. As you create it, I will give it to you. It's for somebody. I'm going to keep reading here. If anybody has any questions, I'll uh, I'll try to take some of these questions too. I think I'm a little bit behind in the chat, but I'm going to go, go ahead and scroll through here. Adam Star C. Bay says, I like the Sears album. I listen to it a lot. Yeah, thank you. Um, it would be awesome for you to make a vid on making a website and how to use CS coding. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, um, I'm going to, man. I'm going to, and I'm probably going to tie it all into one package or whatever, where it's just everything. I may break it down in, into sections because there's some people who want to do a podcast. There's some people who want to do a video live stream. There's some people who want to do a website, but I'm just going to just show you how I did everything and how I do everything. The cheapest ways to to promote, the cheapest ways to find hosting. What is hosting? How do I get it on iTunes? How do I get it on Spotify? All of these other um, um, options and stuff that you just get a piece of it from different people, but just I'm going to show you everything I've learned. And I've tried trial and error. It cost me a lot of money messing up or paying for this and it not not working out right, you know. And so whether it's I may even get into CDs, man, telling you the best place to print CDs and stuff. I don't know. Um, but I know that there's moving forward. 2019 is definitely, definitely coming. And there's a lot of people watching. They're taking notes. Even now, there's people who want to know how to do what I'm doing. I, many of my guests say man your, your podcast looks beautiful like how do i how do i do that how do i go live how do you have all that stuff on the screen like how, what do what do you what do you even use and i've walked some of my friends through it you know what i'm saying and um uh, and i'll continue to do that but i want to have a package there so that at your own leisure whatever it is that you want to do you're going to have all the tools and the cost and what it costs and what type what what microphone is this what light is there on me like links to to all that stuff what how do how do i have this purple ambiance behind me I, I share this with my friends and they go out and buy the stuff and add it to their their podcast man adam starseed bay's got a really cool looking podcast and it's l looking more professional each time better microphones better lighting all of that stuff bringing it to the table and just showing you if that's what you want um it'll be there so i'm gonna do that and that's one thing too that where like i'm saying I want to have it all figured out before I get started because it's going to be a package deal, but there's a lot that goes into it and just breaking down the fine, fine tuning of even a logo and branding. How do I get a logo? Who designs logos? Who designs uh, websites? Should I use Weebly, a free website? Should I use Wix? No, don't use Wix. And I'll show you that and, you know, and show you how to get views to get out there organically the the biggest way you want to get traffic to anything that you're doing is organically you want people you want google to work for you and then if you want to pay and buy and use buy ads and stuff that you that helps too ten dollars here ten dollars there a hundred dollars here three hundred here whatever you you want to do but to be the most cost effective and get the most reach because if you start spending money especially on ads and stuff and it's showing it's you're showing ads to people who who aren't in your niche you're showing ads to people who won't you're showing hip-hop music to country fans you know what i'm saying so how to actually fine-tune all that stuff it's coming and, I've, and i'm also going to be taking on some people just to work with on a one-on-one -on -one level to kind of uh to kind of show you guys how to do that and everything that i do on a one-on-one -on -one level and help you actually walk you through this stuff daily if we need to do daily uh, sessions or, or, or monthly or weekly or whatever i'm going to be offering that stuff too more classes where we get a little bit more in depth and involved. We do the school of the mystics, but at the, at this point, the school of the mystics is more of a hangout um, deal, which I really enjoy hanging out with the community. We get into some, some, we've got into some courses in the past. We get into prayer, we get into fellowship, but it's, um, it's, it's, um, we got to go deeper. <laughs> we got to go deeper. And the thing about that is, it's like, there's people there who are just hanging out, you know what I'm saying? And so, you don't want to kind of throw the pearls before swine. So I'm going to have other things that I'm offering uh, out there too. And it, and, and it's whether it's networking with sharing each other's work, you know, and I, cause I'm, cause I'm, this is stuff I'm still doing. You haven't never arrived. You never have, it's never over. You know what I'm saying? It's always learning. It's always 
you know, I'm going to show you how to get guests on your podcast. Like there's websites that will send you guests according to your niche. If you're into gaming, it'll send you gaming freaks who have good channels and do promo runs. They'll send you interviews. A lot of these people I've been interviewing, I don't even know who they are. You know what I'm saying? And they just send me these emails. I check out their account, check out their profile. You know, they got something beautiful they bring to the table. And then some of them I, I, I reach out to personally on the same website. I'm going to show you all that too. This is the back end. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and the back end is more important. Like we're looking at the final product though, a lot of times. You're looking at the final product of a CD. You're looking at the final product of a polished website or it's fine. Like all of this stuff. Everything is deep. Like it's intricate on how to get this stuff like it. I'm going to show you how to do it, man. So, Monica Hesses, thank you for existing. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, sister. We need to get up again soon. Um, Adam says, even though my passion is podcast, excuse me, about helping others. Shout out to Chris Garner, too. He says, my new work from home job is going to open, open my time. And you totally have a first student right here. Awesome. I think I've skipped a bunch of comments, so maybe not. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna put out some stuff. Definitely going through some of these comments, questions. Okay, they're just refreshed, and there's a ton of questions now. Goodness, um, I'm gonna try to get through here as fast as I can. Adriana says I'm almost forty, and still looking for my talent or anything I'm good at. You got it, sister. You know what you're supposed to be doing. You may you may need help on how to do it, but I think you know what you're supposed to be doing. Jacob says, "All glories to the guru, Wahi Guru." I don't know who that or what that is. Warriors are allowed to eat meat. Jacob says. Um, Chris Garner says, "Vegan protocol <laughs> coming to get to you." Um. Christian says, I love colors, truth. That was something else. Thank you. It's different. It's a different different feel, man. A lot of uh, melodies in that. Uh, Astrid says, what is the view count requirement? I tried to donate, but it said I don't meet the view count requirement. That's weird. That's weird. I'm not sure about it. It shouldn't. That's weird. If you try to donate. Oh, are you saying, you may be saying that you tried to set up Streamlabs maybe I don't know to take donations I'm not sure um, Justin Caldwell says your new album is really good I'm sure you would say that Justin because you're on the album thank you sir we gotta do a video soon man that's gonna I definitely wanna do a video to that song and we're gonna do it soon uh, Justin Caldwell is on the uh, um, f- uh, fourth chakra uh, which is the heart chakra, and it's called Anahata, which is the name of the chakra, sacred heart space, sacred heart of Christ. I'd like to uh, see if we can go in a Catholic church or something and shoot that. I know it's kind of played out, but I haven't done it yet. Fluman says, yo, what's up? What up, Fluman? Christian, it made me feel good. Nathan says, I'm listening. I'm listening, man, at work. Yep, that's Nathan. Nathan. Um, so Wednesday night, man, I think uh, he's going to come on the podcast. So uh, it's going to be good. If you guys don't know who, who he is, uh, go to go to YouTube and type in these five down. And so it's going to be a good conversation. So we're going to do that next Wednesday. Shout out to Nathan. Allie says, Happy New Year from the Rideouts fam. Thank you, Allie. Happy New Year's to you guys, too. Big things coming forward in 2019, my friend. Let's see. Chris Garner says he loves the Venus Project. I'm assuming that's coming from uh, the LCLB song, Venus Project. Jeremy Picks says work hard. Enigma's fire. Ghost was good, too. Ghost, man, Ghost, you know, in, in, in that song, Ghost, I say, I, uh, I shed a tear when I wrote this letter for my seed. I lost years to the envy's lies, lust, and greed. Trust God, and he will supply all your needs. Think of me when you feel the cool of the gentle breeze. Like when I said that, like I really, that's the only song that I wrote. And I was just in tears writing that song for many reasons. Um, it was, it was many reasons, but it was like, I, as I was writing it, like it was tears 
was uh, soaking up the uh, the paper in front of me that I was writing on. So that song really is uh, uh, near and dear to my heart. That has a lot of little things in it to my family, and it's essentially when a lot of it ties into when I leave, like to go back and listen to how to get in contact with me. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty deep. Anyway, um, <laughs> John Santiago says the knowing from Awaken the Fire. Yeah, the knowing. Um, actually, speaking to Jesse Lee, she hit me up the other day, um, asking me what what movie clip that's from and i've talked about it before but the movie clip that i have um in the knowing is th the clips in the video are from the movie the knowing definitely watch it if you haven't nicholas cage the knowing it's about the elohim um the watchers but then the beginning intro is from a uh, movie called the adjustment bureau and that is about the elohim as well um, these the watchers who were sent here to kind of guide us and help us and make sure that we're on the right path and they look like humans they look like regular people so that was a it blew my mind when I found out that the Ju adjustment bureau was about that so watch both of those movies Astrid I love seeing artists that are proud of their work there's an indie mentality or self-deprecation that doesn't resonate with me you should love your own art why else would you make it that's right my, my goal is to make you know what I'm saying? My goal is to have a, a plumb line standard that every song meets this this quality. And if a song falls below that, I try not to put it out. And I try to be honest. And for, so for like getting better, it's like, oh, it's not as good as this song. You want to, you have to have a quality um, plumb line. And so that's what I've done. And, uh, and I'm happy so that like I make music that I want to listen to. At the end of the day, that's what it's about. And I go back and listen to it, and it ministers to me <laughs> afterwards. You know, the, the meditations I'm working on. I can't even, I, when I was working on those meditations, um, I was trying to read it to a friend of mine, read it to my wife, and I would just start crying. I was like, I'm trying to hold it back, look like, a, hey, look what I just wrote. And I'm trying to read it, but I can't. I'm like, looking um, like a bit of lemon. It was just so powerful, man, that I was able to tap into the Father's heart. And as I'm working on it, going into the vision, writing this stuff down, it's okay, Father. Well, now that now that they're here, now that they're listening, Father, what would you want me to say to them? And as I go back and read it, I'll start crying again. And uh, Ali and Kenny, they listened to it, was in tears. They thought I wrote it just for them. But uh, Ali, they told me New Year's. They said, uh. So have you listened to your own meditation yet? It's like, you need to just tap in and listen to your own meditation. I was like, I don't know if I can almost, you know, I haven't listened to it all the way through, but working on it and telling people about it, reading the script and stuff. It was just, it was powerful. Okay, God, wh what would you have me say? Tell them I love them with an everlasting love. I'll never leave them, never forsake them. Tell them I brought them here for a reason. That my love is, is 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 greater than any any trial that they'll ever face. That people have forsaken them and, and talked bad about them and turned their backs on them, but it was only to to bring out that which I was producing in them to bring 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 it forth as fine gold. Things like that, and the Lord would just right and then Woo. Good stuff. Sarah's purpose says, Good morning, guys. Still working my way to listening to them. Good morning, Sarah. Uh, Santiago says, I've seen the growth, D, from just a few people watching live to seeing 30 plus people on live. Yeah, that's it. This, um, you know what I'm saying? That number lies. Like when you get off, it tells you like how many views you have and when you get off. So, but that's awesome, bro. Consistency. They also say like, even if you're gaming or I guess if we're, you're, when you're live streaming, you got something that you're doing consistently, like put, put your stream schedule out there. Tuesdays and Thursdays, 10 a.m. I'm going live and you may catch me in other times too. subscribe. You get notified. So most people are, are, are waiting for the, the episodes. You know what I'm saying? So good stuff. Meditation mysteries of the astral light. If only an unworthy Chris Garner, Chris, bro, you don't name the whole album. You said those, you said enigma. You said, uh, you know, all of them songs, man. <laughs> enigma is a good one. That's one of the first ones that I wrote, um, about, um, 
that getting into mo more esoteric, but I, I, it was definitely a lot of biblical stuff in there. I said, I want to worship like King David in the spirit and under shame. Be like Stephen the martyr when he called up upon your name. I'm not the same. I'm changed spiritually, rearranged, elevation, transformation, while others just stay the same. But I just started talking about I want to be like Enoch and I want to be like these different patriarchs and kind of mention be like Enoch when he seen the chariots fly through the skies at night. You know what I'm saying? Just dropping little jewels. And that, that was the, one of the first ones I did. Um, Astrid said, reminds me of the widow and the mite. Yeah. I, man, and I've talked about this before. I had other homeless people who have not, not supported us financially or nothing like that, but just kind of when we, we did street preaching back in the day and, and people would try to fight us, you know, when we were downtown in the, in the club district and two in the morning, people trying to fight, you know, drunk and on drugs and stuff. And I had homeless people who would take up for me. And then I was able to see they get involved in church. They get cleaned up. They get into a celebrate recovery program and kick dope and get Jesus in their life. And God takes them off the street, gives them a job, gives them, restores their family back to them. In my mind, the Bible says, if you, if you bless a prophet, you will, you will receive a prophet's reward. Touch not mine anointed and do that prophet no harm. But when you bless the children of the Lord, when you sow into, when you join yourself to someone who is on the come up, someone who God delights in, find those people. Now it's, it, we're supposed to help everybody, but when you help those people, I can't help and it's not a pride thing. It's not a, a special thing, even though I am special. We're all special. Um, I seen God clean that man up, restore him, give him back his sanity. And he's a, that's a beautiful life. It worked out his situation. I didn't even know this guy. Some people trying to fight us downtown. This guy, a homeless dude stepped up. Hey, I need to be careful messing with God's anointing. And he just like took up for us and made those people back off and like, that was years ago. It was like 2008, maybe, 10 years ago. And uh, and I just seen God restore him. And I've seen it happen on many occasions, man. And I've done it. I've I've sown into people who I knew was, was good ground to sow into. And God blesses you back. He gives the increase versus squandering away your money or squandering away your time, right? Santiago says, that's the power, man. Yep, power of God, man. Um, Tiffany says, of course. I get on here and there's 33, th 33 of us watching. There's always threes. Thank you, Derek. Much love. Blessings, Tiffany. Jeremy says, faith without works is dead. Astrid, your tr truth, your music has changed my life. I just want you to know that because as an artist myself, for me, that's what it's all about. Yeah, I've already got the uh, the best compliments and stuff that I can get. You know, and I got that early on before it was anything big. When I first opened my mouth, it's like I feel the Holy Spirit when you when you rap. This was years ago. You know what I'm saying? And I knew like I just broke into tears hearing that for the first time. Like, man. You know, um, that's the biggest compliment that your your work, your your music, your art, whatever it is. It's a conduit for the Holy Spirit. Wow. Wow. The creative process that you go through, God can use that or is using that as a conduit for his power, for his presence in people's lives who don't know him, who may have never or would never hear about it. They would probably never hear about um your story and they probably never hear about this this relationship with this power god jesus whatever they'd never hear about it if it wasn't for you opening your mouth and god blesses it your words are alive words have power watch your words don't use them loosely danny says what's going on brother what's up danny guerrero hey man consistency bro i hope you're still writing that book man we're gonna hold you to it we want that book keep keep writing bro let's get together Christian says, I love that movie itself, but yeah, it was deep. I got, it's talking about, uh, uh, Bandersnatch, I guess. And cause Chris, Chris Garner says it's twisted. I found that after it was over, I was expecting other shows to ask me what to do. It was a weird feeling for a bit. They, I think they're going to, 
I think they're going to, man. I think they're going to make more, uh, more like that just because of the impact that that's had that movie and then bird box. And, you know, there's a lot of good stuff out right now. Um, Christian says it was, there's no happy ending in the movie. There may be, I haven't researched it yet, but, um, man, we watched some weird, we, we watched the movie, another movie, um, marrow bone, marrow bone. We just, we watched it as a family and that movie was, it was a sad movie, but it was good. If you haven't watched it, that's another one. Marrow bone. Um, it's sad. I'll let you know that, but it's a good movie. In all way, my, I just love those movies that kind of mess with your mind a little bit. Those, um, you know, make you feel one way, then they change. They, they, you feel a certain way throughout the whole movie. Then they introduce this one twist and it just undoes everything that you felt. Like, oh, I'm not, I don't feel bad for this person. This is a bad person. Whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? Um, there's a bunch of movies like that now. I mean, mostly everything that uh, M. Night Shyamalan has done, you know, all of his movies, not with choices, but with a uh, plot twist, plot twist. I'm not really a man. I'm a ghost, you know, <laughs> whatever the case is, I'm dead. Um, the secret window, uh, the machinist, so many movies that just plot twist. We never existed, you know, something like that. And those are, those are the best ones. I mean, the, the best one we've talked about on here on a show, but was, uh, get out the movie, get out. That's the best one. That's the best one. And he's got another one coming out. Jordan Peele has another one. The guy who made Get Out, he's got a, it's a movie called Us. And I'm watching the, uh, the the trailer and I'm just like, oh man, there's going to be some more deep underlaying tones in it. Because, trust me, it's not going to be just a horror movie or just a thriller. Like he's going to have some deep stuff that's going to be like this inward reflection. I already know it. So watching that trailer, I'm like, I can't wait for that to come out. I think it comes out in March, but watch that trailer. Um... Garner says one ending had sort of a happy ending, sort of. Um, Christian says the movie kind of made me feel weird too in some parts. Yeah, it does. Um, but another one, we're talking about these movies that mess with you. The biggest one, we even talked about the other night, but the biggest one movie that messes with you is uh, The Butterfly Effect. That's a deep one. Um, weird an- Anxiety. And that's a movie about choice. That's a movie about not just choice, but choice affecting the timeline, almost like the theory where you go back into the future. And if you didn't, you know, go down this road and or go to this school, if you transferred school, you didn't meet your wife, then your kid wouldn't be here, whatever. It's like just one little thing that changes the outcome of the entire film or your entire life. I mean, there's I think the reason it was so weird, because there's a truth aspect to it and makes you like do this inward reflection say man how the hell did i get here <laughs> you go back and l- evaluate yourself and look at the choices that you've made and say okay that's what i did <laughs> i'm suffering the repercussions of that so um bars was hoping for no spoilers it's not well i don't think we've really spoiled it um i try to make sure that i didn't um Lewis says, hi, man, hi, man, hi, man. It numbs you. What up? Tiffany, I agree, Astrid. I've already told Derek that I would have not gotten 333 album in September. I might not even be here anymore. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't. It's absolutely my favorite. Awesome. I'm glad you're here. And Astrid says the same. Chris Garner says, where intention goes, energy flows. It does. George says, bonsai. And it's probably a comment to something else. But uh, Lewis says, he's quoting the song, and you don't need a priest. You just need to hear the truth. You speak the truth from the heart. It's a good song. That's from the intro of uh, Anahata. Thad, blessings and bliss to everyone. Receive it. <clears throat> I receive it, sir. <clears throat> um, I remember driving when I was driving uh, a truck. <laughs> I was driving through Panama City, Florida, and it was this hippie dude. He was pulling a wagon. For, I think he probably had like a dog in it, 
and just a bunch of I don't know, flowers or something, but he was just, he had like a psychedelic shirt on, long hair, long beard, and he was just walking on the uh, on the sidewalk. He's just like throwing, making hand gestures towards every car like he was throwing peace at him. Peace, joy, joy. I was like, wow. I was like, it hit me. Wow. Hit me while I was driving. Blessings to everyone in bliss. I'm going to read some more of these comments. Uh, Astrid said, this is true though. I've been, I've been writing a screenplay and every time I sit down to write, it just flows through me without, uh, more than a seed at the beginning. Yep. Just sit, just do it. Just start it. You're like, oh, I only, I only have a, I only have a sentence. I only have a line. You know how many songs that I've wrote that started out with one line? I got 200, over 200 songs. How many of them started out with just a rhyming scheme? Transcend the physical, spiritual, individual. Okay. What comes next? Transcend the physical, spiritual, individual. Faith followed by works, healing them with the syllables. Third eye visual, teaching mystical principles. Knowledge help from the prudent, given unto the simple. What? Write that down. Write it down. It starts with just one. You don't have you don't have all that when you sit down. It comes in waves. Guerrero says, I'm always glad I found you three years ago, bro. I've always had the right and always have the right advice and inspiration. That's what's up, man. I'm glad I met you, bro, three years ago. Uh, Sarah says she's trying to find out how to do those graphics. Yeah, I've seen your channel. Uh, I might even subscribed. Sarah, if not, I'll do it now. Everybody go um, in the in the chat right now. Click on Sarah's Purpose and subscribe to her channel. Big things coming. Go ahead and do that right now. Come right back. Lewis says colors, 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 colors. Santiago says, man, all the work behind just doing the graphics, videos, colors, and schemes for this YouTube live isn't easy. Trust me. I know, man, right? And then when I showed you how to get the uh, the text like that, right, the transparent text and stuff, like you're like, what is this truth? I sent you the coding. <laughs> you're like, what is this, bro? I mean, even that. Right, Irk says he subbed. Yeah, make sure y'all go sub. Garner says walk, walk me, bro, walk with me. Yep, learn from it all. That's what he says. Um, Santiago. So Streamlabs isn't letting you do the media thing. That's weird. Hmm. Streamlab donation is better than um better than super chat um because youtube wants a cut and then the government wants a cut too so stream labs it goes straight to you and we don't tell the government and uh garner says your stream is looking good santiago it is man Real good. Your camera's awesome, man. Lewis says, can you God bless uh, me, Seeks, please? Sure thing, man. Danny, I really want to thank you for interviewing me on your podcast, bro. I remember I didn't even ask you at first. You offered me the opportunity, brother. One of the best decisions I ever made. That's awesome, man. Dad, thank you for your advice and wisdom. I'm very inspired. Started my podcast a few weeks ago. About to get serious with it. Also writing songs again. Love you, Derek. Awesome. Love you, Dad. Inspiration. Be inspired. I mean, that's what it's about, man. You know what I'm saying? Creativity. Um, inspiring yourself. I'm subscribing to your channel, too. Um, inspiring people to, to go out and inspire other people. Creatives spark creativity in you like watch a movie listen to a song that in inspires you to create something beautiful each one reach one and it just spreads that way um isis gate says have you ever considered taking your knowledge of scripture that supports and relates to the metaphysical 
and writing an ebook helping everyone to understand the Christian mystic perspective. Yep, I'm working on it now. Um, I think each each podcast and each song helps that a little bit, but um, I feel you from a uh, from a scriptural perspective. I think that you know, getting a lot of people to transition out of dogmatic religion, they have to see it. I had to see it. I wanted to know, like that was the thing with the awakening was like, it's actually in the Bible, you know. And so a lot of people, if you can show it to them in the scriptures, they'll believe it. And then me over the years, it's led me to like be a part of a lot of different sects and weird groups and stuff because um, they all were good at showing you something that the other ones didn't show you. Right. And it would be like, man, these guys have the truth or these guys are, uh, you know, have something that the other people don't have. And it looks more biblical. It looks more like the early church. It looks more like the early Christian mystics or whatever. Um, so if you can show them things in the Bible and use the Bible, it definitely helps. But there's a lot, man. I remember, you know, I've been talking about this probably over a year now, but I'm I've, I'm working on um, and I'm putting it in my book. I'm I'm about 40 pages deep into the book right now. Um, I want, I want to put everything in it, but I am working on the book. It's going to be called spirit realm. Um, but covering divination, I mean, even that by itself, you know, we're talking about divination. What are we talking about? Tarot cards, pendulums, um, the, the drawing or casting of lots, automatic writing, all of this stuff. Like the Bible talks about divination in a good way. Like God speaks through divination. That blows a lot of people's heads off. People have certain places they can walk with you <laughs> until you give them a certain amount of truth. And then you give them something like, oh, damn, he done. I was with you, man. I was vouching for you. And now you said God speaks through divination. I'm, I'm unsubscribing. I'm disliking the video. I'm unsubscribing and I'm done. Sorry. I'm unsubscribing. I, so trust me, I get those <laughs> comments all the time. But Jesus got those comments too. He got 5,000 people following him. This big army. Man, what are we doing? We we building a movement? What are we? We got numbers. Look, hold on. Hey, uh, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you're not worthy to be my disciple. This guy, what is he? He's a cannibal. We joined the cannibal corpse, cannibal, <laughs> cannibal cult, cannibal corpse cult, right? And uh, they left. The people who were following him, they left. He just, you know, he's left with his disciples and the 5,000, they departed, you know, and he's got his home people like, man, what are you, like, we don't understand, but we're with you. And then some of them understood. They understood what he was talking about. Man, you talk, that's symbolic, man, you, you're, you know. We have to really be with you, you know, but they turn around and leave and everybody has a certain place they'll go probably with everyone until they, you know, show you the real them, the, you know, the some people, they show you that they're human. People see that you're not some super mystical person all the time. Sometimes you have humanity. You like to laugh at funny jokes. You play video games. You are a regular person that even that people find that out. They're done. I thought you were. A man of God. I can't believe you said that. You know what I'm saying? Somebody in chat says mushrooms. Yep. They follow you all the way up. You had me until you said mushroom. New Agers. You had me until you said Jesus. Oh, hell. He's a, he's a Christian. He's a Jesus freak. I'm talking about Jesus out here. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has um, <laughs> their thing. <laughs> um, and uh, shout out to uh, my friend here. Um, man, this chat is moving. Chat is what's up. Um, Tamu, subscribe to her channel too, guys. She's got a good channel. That's what we're doing today. We're just subscribing to our friend's channel, promoting each other's work. That's what we're doing on this episode. I've already subscribed, but make sure y'all click Tamu's uh, um, channel. She goes live and does a lot of really cool stuff. So, um, But she says divine is where you get the word divination. Divination, contacting the divine. There's so many scriptures in the Bible, you know, that, that say that God speaks through the lot as you cast the lot, which is the rolling of the dice, which is the drawing of the straws. Whoever gets the shortest straw is the odd man or whatever. And they, the Holy Spirit speaks through it. And all these scriptures in the Old Testament where 
That's how God spoke. The Bible, the Lord says, I'm the Lord, thy God, I change not. Well, you know, he changed. You know that, right? He don't. I've heard that. He did speak like that, but he changed. He doesn't do it anymore. Yeah, right. Not for you. He does for me. When I pull these cards out, when we're in prayer, we're doing, I, I mainly use them on Christy Lee's podcast. It's a good way to, 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 to learn how to do them, you know, and it was something I was, I was kind of scared at first, right? It's demons, man. It's demons, bro. Be careful. It's demons, bro. Like I was kind of scared at first until I started pulling those cards as I was in prayer and everything, every time I hit, and it, they're not, they are regular tarot cards, but they're the tarot of the most high. They're, they're fashioned a little bit different and it, it worked for me. But, um, every time I pulled a card, it was about what that person was dealing with, or it gave me a little bit more insight. You know, this person's telling me so-and-so blah, 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 blah. And I pulled the card and I say, well, what about this? Have you tried this? Who is this? There's some backbiting. You know what I'm saying? The cards would kind of every lot, is of the Lord. The Lord speaks through the lot. Divination. I was like, wow. Blew my mind. Because we did like seven, eight callers back to back. And I tried them. And every time. I didn't have to tell them, well, I have this card for you. I do it sometimes. But this card says that you're. I just molded into my prayer. Of what I'm speaking. What I'm binding and loosing. Off of them. Through the prayer. It's beautiful. It's a tool. You don't need it. No, you don't need nothing. You don't need anything. I don't think you need the Bible. You just need a a broken and contrite heart and look up at the sky. That's all you need. It helps. It helps. It's a tool. Meditation is a tool. Speaking in tongues is a tool. The glory of God is a tool. Uh, you know, it's a vehicle. Grace is a tool. Like you, man, all of it, man. You pick. You can use it for good or bad. You can use grace for for, for bad. Ask the Apostle Paul. He says, oh, you, you continue with sin so that grace may abound. Well, yeah, you said we're under grace. So we're just going to keep sinning. No, nah, man, hold on. Y'all, y'all using God. They're using the grace. Like you find a loophole in the system. You can keep sinning. No, you can't do that. Stop. <laughs> so, you know, people use it for bad. So, Yeah. Getting back to these questions. Uh, Tiffany says, I listen to 333 almost every day. Thank you, Derek. You're welcome. Astrid, you made me tear up a little bit with that. Need God's love so much. Beautiful. Amen. Garner loves the whole album. I wish there could be lyrics predict inside your album so that I can share with my dad what site can I go to easily print out the lyrics for him I know he won't able to hear it all um and Garner says truestigger.com backslash lyrics yeah but they're not all there there's a lot of them there and then I need to put more up but there's a a bunch you just got to scroll or, or like search the page for that word then title of the song Um, Astrid says, man, just checked out the clock without seeing it. 12, 12 here. Somebody said 11, 11. Somebody says 12, 12. Hey, synchronicity. God is listening. 3 and 33. Angels speak to me. There's a rumored secret ending to the Bandersnatch that hasn't been found yet. But there are five main endings. Yeah. That's a, man. That's a good show. The show... Oh, wow. so Christian says the show 13 Reasons and the movie uh, Get Out made me cry. I was just not comfortable the whole time in those two. It was just a hard, deep, silent pain. Yeah, um, I didn't watch 13 Reasons, but I heard what it did. It made my wife cry. Um, even uh, People are even talking about uh, Bird Box, like um, people who have struggled with suicide. You know, that, that movie is really is about suicide. These entities you look at that make you kill yourself. Like, uh, and I think that's even taken from like the Harry Potter, um, movie or whatever. Like there's some entities, my wife said that when you look at them, you kill yourself. But, um, a lot of people said it triggered them. Those movies trigger them. Yeah. 13 reasons. That's insane. Um, 
Asterisk said, you said my synchronicity word transcend. Thanks, true seeker. Hello, sorry. I get excited when I hear and see it. Long story, but the Holy Spirit has told me it's a sign for me. Man, even when I was, it's crazy. Synchronicities are beautiful. It's the Lord letting you know you're on the right track and uh, the universe dropping breadcrumbs. Keep doing it. You're doing a good job. You're on the right path. So everybody said they subscribed. Um, Danny says, I'm halfway done with my book, but I need advice on the title of the book. Should it be the inner Jerusalem, a hidden enigma or inner Jerusalem, the I am hidden enigma? Hmm. I like the second one. Your body is the holy land. Astrid says, if he can speak through synchronicity, why not divination? This is something I've recently come around to. He speaks through everything. He can speak through a donkey in the Bible. He can speak through fallible men. If he can speak through us, he can speak through whatever he wants. He speaks through nature, the birds chirping, the cool of the breeze. Like He speaks through whatever. You just ain't listening if you can't hear him. That's the truth. Cannibal corpse. <laughs> You're laughing at my cannibal corpse. <laughs> Uma Thurman. Somebody said Uma Thurman. Asher says, I'm writing a book for crystals. Oh, yeah, Crystals for Christians. Yeah, that's good. I, I got a study on that I need to bring out, too. Okay, so um, Isis says, that book is greatly needed. When I talk to a lot of my Christian friends and I mention this side of things, it becomes getting the Bible hit over my head. Yeah, but... um. Yep, it's coming. Sarah says that Aaron's breastplate has had crystals on it. Yeah. Yep. It had crystals and they aligned them in, in such a pattern that would change the vibration of that person to meet with God, to be able to speak to God. Crystals are powerful, man. I mean... You can look the you can look at the uh scientific breakdown on crystals, like the army I watched the documentary the army put together about crystals and the power of how they conduct energy and the type of shape that they must be in and how to transfer energy with the crystals and information. It's deep. Um, look up this scripture right quick. Let's see. Um, not picking promise. Kenny and I were talking about this scripture. Thank Jesus in the New Testament. Leviticus, you shall not eat anything with the blood or nor practice divination or sue saying you should not round off the sides of your growth of your heads nor harm. You have to look at those scriptures in context and um and if you're going to to take that scripture out of context or try to use it, you can't sa shave the side of your head either. You can't shave your beard, and that's a lot of people believe that the sides of the head is the beard. Um I haven't put a razor to my face in in several years and when I was a practicing Israelite, we were forbidden to shave. Um Yeah, so those are the, see that's the thing. So there there's scriptures that forbid divination. Be careful. Soothsaying. So soothsaying and divination is is different things. Let's get that straight. Soothsaying, divination, divination, um consulting with with demonic spirits. Astrology. All of that's forbidden in the Bible. Let's go further. Holidays forbidden esteeming one day over the next birthdays 
forbidden. All types of things are forbidden in the Bible. But then it goes out, it goes on to say the right way to do it. It's when any time that you see one of those uh, condemning features, even when God condemned people, he condemned them and then, then what he did, he redeemed them. You're going to find those same scriptures. If you dig like these are for some reason, the, the church, we it's always a spooky, scary, scary, stay away from thing. Um, you, why don't why don't we know about those other scriptures? Why don't we know about the scriptures that talk beautifully about divination? Why? Because they're not there. Yes, they are. Just do a word search. Start with a word search. These this free Bible programs. I use a Bible program called Esword. Breaks down the Hebrew, the Greek. You can search any word. You can. I mean, there's so many free websites. Esword, free program. Type in divination. Start there. You can do the same research I'm doing. Then you can try it. Then you can read the Bible and see what is a ca casting of lots. Uh, it's divination. The disciples did it. The prophets did it. When Judas left, and it was Acts chapter 1, I believe it was, Judas left. They dropped down to 11 disciples. There were two more who wanted to fill the spot. So they said, look, we don't know who it should be. We love both of y'all, but we got to keep the sacred number 12. 12 signs of the zodiac. 12 months in a year. 12 disciples, 12 tribes of Israel. Then you got the 13th tribe, right? And then you got the 13th disciple and figuring out how all that fits in. I said, this is how we're going to find out. Let us, let's draw lots, cast, cast lots to see who it's going to be. I'm telling you. And they said the Holy Spirit speaks to it. It's like, this is some of my copal resin, but it's, you know, they take a handful of straws. They do drawing straws and casting of lots. And you hold them out and say, okay, you grab one, you grab one, you grab one. Whoever has the shortest straw loses. And they said the Lord spoke, speaks through that. That's a game of chance. That's the luck of the draw. That's where that term comes from. The luck of the draw. But God speaks through it. So be it. There's a bunch more. Like I said, uh, astrology, worship, playing music. You know God condem con condemned playing music in the Bible. Why don't y'all quote that Sunday morning? Why don't y'all quote that? God said, don't play no more music. He said, I won't hear your songs. Why are you singing to me? Stop. I'm not going to receive your songs. Why don't y'all take that out of context? He said it. All of these things, God condemned everything in every one to show you that Christ comes and makes everything new. Christ comes and makes everything perfect. Astrology, how is he going to promote astrology in one chapter and then condemn it in the next and then promote it? You got to understand the context, man. God is not double-minded. God is not a man that he should lie. Just isn't. The Bible, I'm going to quote Santos Bonacci, the brother. God, the Bible would never Forbid astrology. For the Bible is pure astrology. Santos Bonacci, 2012. Good stuff. It's true. It tells his story. The stars. You see, the stars tell the story of Yeshua Hamashiach. I'm telling you. How you think the stargazers knew to show up at his birth? The stargazers. Not the priest, not the pastors, not the church folk, the stargazers were the first ones to show up at his birth. They read the stars. It was talking about him. It's talking about you. It's good stuff. Uh, Tiffany says, we've all been wanting Smurf houses for Christmas. <laughs> what is that? Definitely the synchronicity top of the conversation lately because five grams of these and you can be as woke as me. 
spin. Truth. Uh, somebody, I guess it's Kenny or Ali, says, I'm not trolling, I promise. I am sinking the reference you just made. Maybe for clarity. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm telling you, there's, it's, the Bible condemns it all. Let's let's go in Sunday Sunday school and tell them, hey, God don't doesn't listen to this. God, that's why these den- denominations and sects get made. But I urge you, I challenge you. Understand astrology. The Bible says, "Return to the ancient path. Return to nature. Surely the heavens declare the glory of God. The open skies." Declare the work of his hands. The heavens declare. The morning stars sing out his glory. That gets deep. A tone. A vibration. It's beautiful. Tamu says, thank you for the shout out. No problem, my friend. Okay. I'm going to straighten up a couple of these scriptures just because you're poking me and I got to bite. I got to fight back. Um, 2020 website says, come on, brother. Don't you know that Lucifer comes as an angel of light? There is a way that seems right, but leads to destruction. You should know this. Where, where does Lucifer come as an angel of light? That's not in the Bible. It's not in your Bible. It's not. Because Lucifer's in the Bible one time, and it's not in that verse. You're mixing stuff, brother. You're mixing things. You're mix- You're getting confused with these scriptures, bro. You've been bamboozled. You've been hoodwinked. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says that Satan comes as an angel of light. And the angel of light, in the context that it's speaking of, is not light beings it's not palladians it's not the e elo the l it's not those guys the angel of light that it's referring to is church folks it's church folks you're going to hear that scripture a lot even the devil comes as an angel of light brother it's talking about church folks It's those who say, Lord, Lord, How do, why do you say, Lord, Lord? How do you say you love me, but you don't do the things I say? That's who he's talking about. It actually goes on to tell you if you keep reading. This isn't no downloaded information. This is uh, interpreting the Bible with the Bible. It's talking about church folks. It says, which are false apostles among you. False prophets, false apostles among you. That's what it's talking about. Let the Bible interpret itself with the Bible. It's not talking about what what do you mean? It's it's not mentioning both. There are are other scriptures that say that talk about angels. Let's go to those scriptures. But that scripture is not talking about an angel. That's that scripture is talking about false apostles who come as angels of light, messengers of righteousness. That's what it's talking about. It's simple. It's not deep. We just been told we've heard it quoted over and over and over. We've heard it quoted that divination was demonic. We haven't searched the scriptures for ourselves. It doesn't take a lot. I told you what to do. Get the Bible program. Look up those words. And understand what the hell you're reading. You don't even know, man. Read, break those words down. Become a, a Berean. The Bible says to study to show thyself approved. You got to study this stuff. You got to break it down. And you'll... But, if you're in church, be careful because uh, you probably won't be there much longer. A year, however long it takes. Trust me, it happens with a lot of people. And you got to go there and be quiet, hold your tongue, act like you're okay with certain things that you're not. You know, you got to just, it, it, it. things become, when you start breaking that those scriptures down, um, if you keep it to yourself, you're okay. But if you start speaking on it, you're going to be in trouble. That's the truth. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. It's an open challenge. Prove me wrong. 
the angel of light. Oh. For those of you who don't know where that scripture is, 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. Break it down. This is what we do. I used to do this. I used, I used to, there's a reason I don't do this no more. Because y'all just want to fight. I don't like to fight no more. This is like 101 doctrine. Get off the milk. Okay, you're banned, sir. You've been disliking my videos for too long, buddy. Sorry. Sorry. It's just been too long. Hidden. Like that. Not that you disagree, but you just do this every episode, just like trying to make it about you and changing the damn. And I, I pay attention to the stream too much that it kind of messes me up. I'll be in mid conversation. This dude's trying to like get my attention and stuff. And it's my fault because I'm reading it. You know what I'm saying? So he ain't contributing nothing good. He's just trying to debate with everybody and stuff. All good. There's plenty of channels out there for you, though, bro. You'll fit in, you'll fit in good with like a Watchmen channel. Calls out fraud and like points fingers and stuff i don't really do that no more you should have caught me shoot eight nine years ago we could have been friends we really could have we would have started a ministry together a facebook ministry <laughs> arguing with people on facebook eight years ago we would have did it man we would have been something we would have been something hey i'm caught I'm, <laughs> danny says can't can't allow that type of negativity you know 2019 man 2019 moving forward <laughs> you're banished go back to whence you came aka start a new channel and come back as another uh persona that's what we mean do that because that's what they do you know but yeah if you want to you know you can inbox me you can email me you can call me you know what i'm saying like break these scriptures down this is what we do i stake my life on this stuff i know what it sounds like I do. I know what it sounds like. I know I know how that <gasps> shocking. Oh my god, did he say divination was of God? Yes, he did. I know what it sounds like coming from that. Trust me, I counsel people, I talk to people. It's scary. Once you've heard something for so long, it's demonic. Once you've heard something You know, you know, whatever it is, racism, be scared of these people. Don't go down this road. Don't you, you, you have these preconceived notions that aren't right. 2019, we don't have time for that. Chris Garner, we're moving forward. Sorry. Let's see where we at. Garner, um, I'm trying to jump back into the, um, man, a lot of, uh, a lot of comments, man. Yeah, the, man, there's a lot of good stuff in these comments too. Um, but something deep, man, that, um, uh, shoot, even from the last podcast I, I figured out, man, we was talking about, um, the lady was talking about ca being a Catholic and like, we're talking about the fact that a lot of the Catholic churches pray to, pray to the, pray to the, the saints who are more holy than they were. They pray to the saints to get them to talk to God or Jesus for them. And she's talking about how they don't, didn't feel worthy you know, people have been people have been um, Catholics their whole life, and they don't feel worthy to go to Jesus. That's why they go to Mary. That's why they venerate the Mother, and they even go to the saints if they're dealing with an issue, pregnancy issue. They'll go. To, there's a certain saint over everything, just like in Hinduism, there's a certain god that represents the manifestation of the supreme ultimate deity, and so they'll go to that lesser god that they have a better chance of hearing them especially with that ailment because they care for that certain ailment. They care for those who are widowed. They care for those who are nursing different saints. It's really interesting. 
um, but there's a sense of not feeling worthy. So they'll go to the saint that has that cares for their need and they'll get them to pray for them. That was a very interesting concept that uh, was like a revelation to me when she shared that with me the other day. It was pretty deep. Garner says 12 astro astrological signs being the 12 archetypes of consciousness. Yep. Uh, Anthony says, don't stop. I'm 50. I can listen to music now. Thank you. Awesome. Um, I'm 50 and I'm listening to your music art. Thank God I heard you. That's so that's so awesome, man. When the older generation gets it. And I, and I say this and I don't mean this. I, I hope I don't sound condescending because I've had people quote me on it. The old white women who who listen to the music. I love it, you know, um, just because, like I said, it's it's like the stereotype. Old white women don't are not going to listen to rap. Well, it's something deeper than rap. They don't just listen to rap. Let's put get that straight. They understand the message. They understand the um, the intent behind it, and they resonate with it. And it doesn't matter who you are. It transcends the physical and reaches to the spiritual individual, right? Irk says, I love Santos. Um, Astrid says there will be signs in the sun and moon and the stars. And even Genesis says that would be used for signs. I mean, it's a calendar. It's the calendar. They didn't have these calendars we have. That was the calendar to look at the stars. Look at the when is the equinox view the zodiac. It's all in the Bible. People that altered the Bible are double minded. I mean, look up the word prophet. Prophet translates back to a seer seer of Yahweh and what 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 does seer mean that same program I mean you can get a strong concordance I got a strong concordance that's about this big you can look it up or you can just download a program and just search it a seer in the Bible Samuel was a seer there's a bunch of seers the word seers translates to stargazer the people who showed up to visit the birth of Christ the stargazers but it's against the Bible to Look at the stars. Now there are that verse, even Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. That's not talking about Satan. It's not talking, it's not talking about Satan as it's talking about apostles. But there are verses that, that talk about angels, that talk about messengers, not necessarily angelic entities, because the word only means messenger. Paul is called Paul. Is called an angel. Jesus was called an angel. You know what I'm saying? Um, all that kind of stuff, man. Let me just. But there are verses that tell you what to look out for. Dealing with angels. Uh, Danny says those wise men were wizards. Thank you, Isis Gate. <laughs> Thank you for the donation for the super chat and much blessings to you. Thank you for being you showing up. You're awesome. Bars is back. He says, yo, Chris bars is uh he's got a story. We got to have him back on here. Once you do the move, bro. Um, once you finish the move, I'm going to get you back on and we're going to tell that whole story and, um, let people know how manifestation works. So that's going to be good. Because Chris Barr has just relocated, found a job, and he's moving pretty close to me. So it's going to be cool. Christian says, Stardust tells a story too. The colors of the universe, the black holes, the galaxies, stars, suns, all of it. Nothing but left ancient inf information. Yeah. Anything that says my birthday is 12. Awesome. 12, 12. Yep. Everyone is trying to make up what they see with the within the perspectives. I know, man, and it's so scary. You do have to protect yourself in, in, in your mind and uh what you entertain. And you have to be inclusive. You have to show grace and mercy in all of it. That has to be the, the driving force behind it all. If it ain't, it's demonic, <laughs> quite literally. If it's dissension, if it's proving that you're right, if it's arguing, you're so argumentative. If everywhere you go, you're getting getting into argue, arguments with people, you need to leave that behind in 2018. I left it. I left it behind in like 20, 
12 when the world ended. Um, how do you say that Chris Garnas he says the Zoroastrians priests were called magi Mm -hmm. Lucifer fell from grace is what Kenny says Lucifer just may be Venus is what Garner says. It is. Look look that up on dictionary.com. Go to dictionary.com. Type in Lucifer. Then go back to dictionary.com and type in Venus. And you're going to look in and it's going to say that it is an allegory to Venus. And you look up the, the breakdown of the word and look at listen to the story. And it tells you the story. This the whole thing is an astrological journey. There's nothing new under the sun. Nothing new. It's just repeating over and over. It's the hero's journey. We're all on it. We're at different places. But we're all on it. Um, Josh says, what do you say to people who use incest and slavery to deny God? Yeah, there's there's a lot of people who um who who try to use that, you know. Um Slavery is, is interesting. Like every every um every nationality of people has had slaves, you know. Black people have enslaved Africans, you know what I'm saying? White people have enslaved Africans, uh the Native Americans had slaves, they enslaved each other, the whites enslaved the other whites and you know what I'm saying? And and quite frankly, there's a level of that where People are still slaves. You just get to go home every night. You just get you just get to go back home. You're a slave to the system. You're a slave to the powers that be. But one thing about that whole slavery thing is understanding in the scriptures, just because the, the Bible used that word, is not necessarily always talking about slavery. And just because it says slave, slaves be subject to your masters, a lot of times it's talking about um working for someone you're a slave for that wage you and, and then and then there was also um volunteer slavery there was slavery where like you were in trouble and you had to go work off a a, a debt so you sold yourself you sold yourself into slavery to work for that family to work on that farm you had to set yourself into slavery because you wanted a daughter's hand in marriage okay Work on my farm for seven years. After the seven years, you get my daughter, you're free to go. Okay. So when it uses the word slave, a lot of times it's talking about that. Um, and it in and, and working for people, do your work as you're doing it unto the Lord. That's one thing, wherever you are. Don't do it like you're working for that person. So there's a lot of stuff in there. I don't condone it. And there is some obscure things or whatever. But I'll just say that not every time the Bible talks about slavery and owning people and stuff um the bible's been it, it's it's da- it's dated man but it's magical there, there, that was normal there was a lot of things that was normal that we don't do anymore you know what i'm saying and what whatever book it is let's say well because we, a lot of people who condemn the bible or, or condemn belief in god because of that they'll be of a more spiritual tradition especially with 2012 the mayans the age of enlightenment these people were sacrificing each other to appease the gods all really all all like gods demanded bloodshed and i've talked about this on detail don't want to get a lot into it but every god demands bloodshed even yahweh but the blood of his son i'm not going to get into it i've done it on other uh, uh, episodes you got to pay for your sins with blood i mean that's just what it is the mafia go sin against the mafia and see what you got to pay with blood sin against the government see what you got to pay with your blood your time um tiffany says absolutely well i'll tell you a story of whiskey and mystics and men and about the believers and how the whole thing began first there were women and children obeying the moon yeah 
Danny says, have to read the original language in, in its interpretation. People will be surprised that many in English translations are mis mistranslated. Yeah. You're right, man. Um, that's part of the seeking process, too, because you think that the Bible is the uh, inerrant word of God, which I believe that the inerrant word of God is Christ. Um, it's not the Bible because that's misprinted. They took stuff out of it. How's it? How's it perfect? How's it not been tampered with? It says that each version says something different. It does. Which one's right? Maybe the Hebrew. We'll go back to the Hebrew, the original. The first time they wrote it, it was perfect. They made changes. And then even now you have more versions of the Bible come out and they make changes to each one because they have to because they can copyright it. If you was just to take it and put your name on it, you know how you got the Rod Parsley Study Bible, you got the so and so Bible, it got their name on it, you know, all these different patents, the Benningham Bible, all these guys. You have to change so many things to get a copyright patent on it. You can't just take the whole Bible and just reprint it and put your name on it. You have to change stuff. That's why you have the New King James. That's why you have, I mean, all these different versions, man. And they, they have changes for a reason so that they can put a copyright on it. And it's continuing to change. Moving on through the comments, interacting with my people. Um, okay, wow, I'm think I'm way behind too. Jesus, let's go, let's go. I bet y'all can catch up now. Uh, let's see where we are. So Dumbledore says, "Yeah." Um, hold on, smitten down. So everybody, <laughs> I'm so behind y'all. Um, everybody saying bye to the guy who just got banned or whatever. You can watch, just watch from a distance. You don't play well with others. Um, somebody says smitten down. Tori says new to this channel. What's up? What's good, Tori? What you doing, man? Tiffany says he should, uh, it's more like he should stop drinking the water. Yeah, that's a good, good idea. That debating is so overrated. Not when you're in it, though, man. You know? When you're in it, that's all you live for. Because it's your eternal salvation. Like, I just told him he was wrong about something that he he based his life upon. I based my whole life on that. The pastor, the doctrines, that's a weird place to be, man. That's a weird place to be. It's called cognitive dissidence. They don't say that. I don't care what Truth Seeker said. Truth Seeker is a new ager. How does he don't know the Bible? It's called cognitive dissonance. Look that word up. You probably never heard of that either. Um, Dumbledore says, I've, I've been caught up in that mindset before. It sucks. So have pity on him. Yeah, I have pity on him. Yeah, man. Me too. You know, I try to show grace with him, but they just trying to be silly sometimes. <laughs> Sarah's purpose says, don't deserve my energies, most likely. You would not get them. That's the voice. Yeah, that's a good verse. I love that song, right? Um, asking God for an answer and relying on his response is what Kenny says. Danny, bro, I love that podcast interview you did with that guy talking about God's imagination. I have no idea why I've never heard about Neville Goddard. Yeah, I know, right? I think I've, I think I might have had one of his books years ago. Um, Cheryl says, I love the throne room visualization meditation. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you for the purchase. Thank you for the support. That's awesome. I'm going to do more like that. I've got some, um, I'm learning little things, even with the, the, the throne room. And I'll just be open. Like I'm learning if I'm doing some courses right now where I'm studying, um, just to kind of get certified and take deeper courses on it. But um, hypnotherapy and, and the power of the spoken word and going into the trance state and, and speaking over people in the trance state. We do that. I mean, yeah, I do that with the music. When you listen to that beat and you just close your eyes and I'm just speaking that over you. I mean, you're going into the trance state and you're in, entering into uh, hypnotic states of consciousness, even through the drums. When you're at church and the pastor's playing the drums or even when the drums get real fast doots, 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 and everybody's jumping and shaking and running like that's a trance state too heightened senses of awareness so um i'm studying like little things like um 
if I should say you or we. For some reason, as I'm writing it, I'm saying we. As we enter, and you'll notice in the chakra meditation, I say we. And as we feel the energy rise up, it's cleansing us, moving. Because I'm a partaker too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going with you. Even though I may be the one delivering it, I'm going with you. You know? But I've had a couple of people say, you probably should say you. Just make it singular about the person versus we. But um, so I'm just learning what's what little things I can improve on and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, he was a Christian mystic talking about the law of attraction a long way before the secret documentary came out. Yeah. Yep. Well, it was a bunch of people, man. But, um. Tiffany says I was forced to go to the Catholic Church. Eventually, got in trouble for not wanting to go to confession. Because the guy who, uh, because he is the guy who has some school that makes him closer to God. Yeah. That's weird. I, I understand confession, right? I mean, if you come, if you do a session with me, you're going to have to confess. You know, you're going to have to get things off your chest that you've been holding. You need to find somebody that you can confide in that uh, that you can trust that's not going to hold it over your head, uh, that's going to help you. There is healing in confession, not saying it's the priest, not saying it's me, it's Jesus, like a friend. You got to find somebody you can confide in. Problem with the church, you go to the church folks and you confide in them and they go tell everybody. Like, Damn, I thought I was, I thought I was telling you a, a secret. Like, I ain't told nobody about this. Not everybody at the church knows that I'm struggling in this area because of you. I remember years ago, um, in the church and I was studying masonry and first we studied it as a uh Illuminati thing and scary and stay away from the masons run the world like all this weird fear stuff then I started kind of getting into the philosophy and understanding a lot of what masonry te teaches in the different paths of masonry and it got it became to be interesting of how they have this order and it's like the brotherhood and like man that's how a Christian brotherhood should be and my friend was like nope they make you sign blood oaths and I I, I, I had that I still have my thing have the blood oaths printed out because we used to preach against masonry. You know what I'm saying? And uh, had the blood oaths pr printed out and say, you have to seal a demonic oath that if you share the secrets, you're going to be cut from ear to ear. And you had to, you know, sign these bloody oaths and, and say them. And it, you look at the oaths and you're like, man, that's demonic. But now that I'm looking back on it, I see it as symbolic, like those oaths. And my friend's like, oh, man, that's demonic. Well, I said, man, I should have made you sign an oath like that. I should have made you sign one because uh, now all these folks up in the church know the, the stuff I pulled you to the side and uh, needed prayer, needed help. And you told everybody. You, you put it on Facebook. You took the things I told you in secret and posted it on Facebook? You're crazy. I should have made you sign an oath that, you, that you'll cut yourself from ear to ear if you, if you share the secrets that we're talking about. Yeah. It makes a lot more sense now, don't it? So... What if we die, we actually wake up and remember everything? Wouldn't that be interesting, a strange, a strange feeling? Yeah, man, it would be good. Um, I'd hate to forget it all, right? I'd hate to forget everything, especially the, your experiences here. We've had some beautiful encounters, and we're still having them, you know, and people and food and um, the wind brushing your face and the cool of the air. Like, it's just so much little small things that I'm thankful for. My breath, you know what I'm saying? Just just little states of consciousness. I would hate to forget it. You know? That that's a that's a bigger fear than anything. You know, it's returning to a place where this that didn't matter or something like that, or I don't know. It's very interesting to study death and uh but this is fun. I enjoy fellowship, I enjoy people and don't get me started. I've been watching too much stuff on TV about dead people. I gotta, I gotta go back to the scriptures. I, I have to, you know, I have to go back and, and um, you know, read what the Bible says about death and what Jesus says talking about conquered death and death has lost its sting and there is no fear in death and, you know, and I've given you eternal life, not just you know life on this earth, but I've given you eternal life forever, forever, ever, forever, ever, forever is long. I've given you eternal life. That's deep. 
and sometimes like you listen to all these different people, there's past lives, there's this, there's that, there's this, and you just kind of get confused. Even me, I'm trying to open myself up to new ideas at times. And I have people who believe in things and I try to walk with them a little ways. And even if I don't get it, it's still like, you know, I'm not really sold on the whole past life regression. Um, even as I'm studying hy hypnotherapy, there's something called you have the past life, the past regressions to go back and relive memories. But there's also something called the uh, memories of suggested memories. Suggested memories. And I think a lot of times these so-called past past life regressions are suggested memories you are in Lumeria. You are a you are a uh, a, ma a magician. You are married to the to the king. You're the queen. You know they just give you they almost like a guided meditation where they implant things to you, suggested memories. I mean you see that a lot of time with these alien uh, uh, ab abduction scenarios. You're in your room, and what is it that walks through the door? What does he look like? What does his eyes look like? The eyes. It's something about the eyes. What is it? You know, like, damn, must have been abducted by an alien. Most likely haven't. Probably not. Not in that way. Might have been visited, not abducted. Ain't worried about that kind of stuff. So there's a big difference in going into the hypnotic states. And there, there's power there. Suggested memories. I mean, that's how we're going to get healing. Okay, I mean that's I went through it as a Christian, right? Like I went through deliverance and ministry and prayer counseling, and they lead you back, go to the point of pain, do the shadow work, and you're at this place where you've been abused, you've been touched, you've been cheated on, or whatever the case is. You've been called stupid and ignorant. You've been told that you shouldn't exist from your parents. You know they you were a mistake. You go back to that place, and uh, and then for the Christian uh hypnotic regression I did it was suggested because it's okay where's Jesus at where's Jesus at walking into this situation there he is what is he doing how is he healing you what would Jesus say and you see Jesus coming and making all things new and making it right does he really do it did Jesus really go to your past yeah if you believe it if you let him if you go into that it happens and he remembers your sins no more throws your past as far as the east is to the west and uh, you're free from that. That's the power of that. Did he really do it as you envisioned it? Yeah. Did you really encounter Jesus? Yeah. If you had that encounter, it's real to you. It goes back to like the, what Joe Rogan's talking about. When you're on psilocybin, when you're on ayahuasca, and the elves show up. And they tell you the secrets of the universe. And they do work on your DNA. And they repair your body and take your hurt and pain and bring forth healing when that happened did you did that really happen did you really go into the etheric realms and meet the elves did they really share with you the secrets of the universe well i don't know but your experience you have that experience it was real to you it was real to you so you live your life like it was real a lot of people live here in, in delusions and making up fear. You're living your life uh, afraid of things that don't exist and will never exist. You're making up <clears throat> scenarios about how you're going to fail in your business endeavors, how you're going to fail in your marriage. You can't thinking about people taking your spouse from you. Hey, I'm talking to you. You keep entertaining all these weird things that are not true, but you're entertaining them. It's fear. False evidence appearing real. These fears. So you're living your life like that fear is real. That that memory. You've created a reality. An alternate reality. What if? The one who got away. You keep daydreaming. You're not taking that into 2012. Can't take it with you guys. Home saw so much information to cover. Yes, sir. Tiffany. I can talk to God myself i can talk to god to myself can't i can i pretty sure he hears me every wednesday my father would send me with another question where they could not answer like where does pur why does pur purgatory exist in the bible and it doesn't yeah 
my studies are booked, pun intended. Um, Astrid, yo, I opened the Bible looking for a verse and landed. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every evil. It's relevant. Yep. Evil is like killing and raping and all is not using deck of cards. Yeah. You find out what that means. The world, right? When you, when you read the world in the Bible, we think it's people who aren't in the church. <laughs> people who don't go to your church. You know, people who are of a, another denomination or another faith. That's the world. No, the world is all the, the is all the wickedness, the killings, the envying, the murderer. That's what it's talking about. The world, the rudiment elements of the world, the, the, the basic default nature, like the fallen nature. That's the world. It's not talking about people. There's a scripture. You got you got to just rightly divide the word of truth. Then one scripture will say. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. What is that? Is that talking about people? No. Because then you find these other scriptures where Christ came to save the world. Save the universe. He is the king of the universe. He he cares for the world. You got to figure out what, who it's talking about. You, you really, you got to break down the Greek and Hebrew even to see what world is that? What age? What is What does that even mean? You got to look it up. Um. I believe the North Star was a UFO. Any thoughts on that? I used to believe that, Tiffany, just when like I was really big into ufology and it was it was um it was um new to me. Everything was a UFO. I mean, Ezekiel's wheel. Um I'm I'm leaning more, uh, you know, towards ast astrology now. Um and that would be the stars that they followed. Now there there was a point in time where I I did believe that, you know, and even Ezekiel's wheel I thought was a UFO, but it's the Zodiac wheel and they studied the stars and, and followed them. So, um, let's see lane, Laney's world channel two ever had any ghost encounters. Um, I wouldn't say, uh, I don't know if there were ghosts as far as like a disembodied person showing up. But I've definitely had spirit encounters with like uh, um, elemental spirits and, and angelic spirits and demons and all that kind of stuff. But I don't think I've ever had a um, like a a ghost, like a person, if that's what you mean. But the word ghost in the Bible translates to God, you know, and it's all the same word, <laughs> spirits. Uh, Dumbledore. Hey, Truce, can you give a shout out to Paul statements and his company host defense? Really great stuff can help lots of people suffering from diseases. Sure thing. He just did. 2012 was a shift on an awakening. Wasn't it like almost last times of being saved or was something demonic activity happen that time too? like vice versa? Good advances. So bad. Here's about. Yeah. Reading some more of these comments, finding my intuition, finally trusting it. I just be knowing spiritual gifts. Thanks, family. Home sauce. Yeah, man. What you coming out with, bro? You doing another? You going to do your podcast, bro? Radio show? What you going to do? 2019, bro. Uh, home sauce. YouTube Martin Kenny 2020. Tell me what you think. Um, I think somebody else might have told me to look up Martin Kenny. Y'all, I'm trying to keep up with these comments, but I'm getting lost. I'm just going to try to go to the questions and stay off of the. Um. <laughs> I'm reading this comment from Santiago and uh, there's a lot of people who believe that uh, John Santiago says um, he did an episode with a guy, a pastor uh, that said him thinking of not having to go to church to him is considered a sin. Mm hmm. Well, it's a sin when you think that the, that church is somewhere that you go. There's another, um, you know, misinterpretation 
misnomer that church is something that you go to. The word translates to ecclesia, and it, it's not where you go. Church is, who, is something you are. It means it's the called out ones, the body of Christ. And like Even now, I believe we're having church now. There's a lot of people listening to the podcast. This is the church, the closest thing to church that they're going to come come to. They're not going to go in these buildings. They're not going to go in a lot of these whitewashed tombs. I, even when I was in church and I had a, a global reach, people were getting born again. People were traveling to come get baptized and things like that. Like I couldn't tell these people where to go to church at. It was, you know, hey, what church I should go to? That's That might be giving somebody a death wish. One of the last church I went to when I came out of witchcraft, it was a cult. Like, they looked like a regular church. They were sacrificing animals and having sex with children. I didn't know that, but it came out later. I'll just tell you just to go to any church. Man, it's like throwing a, a, a baby to the wolves, man. I can't do that. You stay at home. Go to the park with your family. You know, find you a good internet video. I don't know. I can't. I still can't. It's pros and cons and all. I know, you know, I, I was out of church for a while and um, I led a buddy of mine to the Lord. He was an atheist. Led him to the Lord. We baptized him. We did everything. Started having our own Bible studies. But then I was like, man, this he needs to have the Christian experience. He needs to go, get plugged into a church, like to know what it's like to grow with a body of people and go and, you know, maybe have the same experience or similar one I had. Didn't know where to go. So we just started visiting all these churches. We started going to Church of God, Church of Christ. We started every Sunday was a different church. You know, it's just weird foolishness that the majority of them. And I, I, we just had to kind of seek God for ourselves. And finally, we found a little biker church of all places. And uh, that's where we fit in. And that's where we, we grew in the body for some years. And so I interviewed my old pastor, Pastor Brian Jones, and he was the pastor of that biker church. And so you can go listen to that episode to hear more detail about my experiences at the biker church, which was good for the most part. But I can't just say go there. There's all, it's always like a backhanded, you know, you're going to, you can't do it. You know, I can't do it. You can, I can't. A few hours ago, uh, sorry, people, I have a cheap phone. Okay, I guess you said. I'm probably a question I missed. I'm sorry. Astrid said, you helped me open up my heart chakra yesterday, Truth, with Solar Boat. The Holy Spirit was definitely there. It was beautiful. I felt such a longing for a surrender to God. Amen. I'm good. I'm done. Call it a wrap. Pull the plug on the, on the episode. Pull the plug on the music. I'm good. That's what I'm seeking. That. I found it. I got it. Job well done. It worked. Well done, my good and faithful servant. It worked. I'm done. Hang it up. I'm good. That's all I need. That's all I want. And it's working. It's working on a huge level too, man. You guys are awesome because I couldn't do it without you guys. Really, I really couldn't. So I, I really, uh, I really thank you guys um, for believing in the work and and making that possible. Like co-creating that encounter. For Astrid, for Tiffany, all of you. And then wanting to pay it forward. And I'm not, you know, it's not just about a gimme, gimme, gimme thing. It's not just about help me, support me. You guys know I pour out. You guys know I give my life to this. And what I, I, whatever we have to do, we're going to make it happen. So, again, um, it's a it's a team effort. It is. It's good stuff. Tiffany says, I absolutely agree with you, Derek. Not to mention he's doing things to my friends and classmates. I find more understanding, peace, and hope and inspiration and simply will go through. Amen. All right. So um, Kenny says, if we don't remember, what's the point? If we don't remember. um, Maybe you remember it as a test. The life you live determines the place you go to. You die. Oh man, you was a wicked dude, man. We gave you, we gave you plenty of choices to get your life right. We gave you plenty of choices to help people. We gave you plenty of choices to 
renew your mind. We gave you all, we set before you a path, good and evil, and you chose evil every time. Why'd you do that? Whether you're going to heaven or hell, or you got to come back to the earth to redo it, or just level, I mean, that's the proven ground. I did it definitely similar. I think the Christian experience would be similar to that if you believe in heaven and hell and all that. Like you, what you do here depends on where you spend eternity or whether you have Jesus or whatever you, you believe. But um, most religions believe something similar. Um, Astra says, I'm with you with the past life regression. My theory is sometimes tapping into collective consciousness ancestors. Oh my God, Lemuria. Yeah, don't even get me with <laughs> Lemuria. Sorry, anyone who believes in Lemuria. It's fun. I mean, there were ancient civilizations, you know, and there's a lot of proof of uh, Atlantis and there's un under underwater civilizations, you know, and um, there's some interesting stuff, but just to say it as true, so whatever. Um, Kenny says, or possibly demonic memories from their past life. I say in one of my songs, I say in all of my past lives, I've played the bad guy. A man of sorrow with no tomorrow. I walk with the devil by my side, but I believe in second chances. People taking second glances. May it knock me down, but not out. Yeah, I'm still standing. <clears throat> my throat is um getting a little raspy. I have to go take my daughter to get some lunch. Um, I'm about to get off here, but I'm going to try to fly through these last few questions. Uh, do, 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 do. Jesus is coming back. Look busy is what Garner says. <laughs> Christy says, hi, just pray for help and healing from my demonic attacks that are hard at work to my lower frequency and to keep me down. Many positive energies and peace just join in. I refuse to go down. This helps. Yes. Yep. 2019, the energy is already good. It's already, um, and, and it just with your level of expectancy. I have things that personally I'm trying to lay down or trying to move into 2019. With I, My vision is big. You know, there's a lot of new things and I know that I can't move forward with certain things holding on to me. I have to let go. Mindsets. Different things I have to let go of moving in. But with that, it's instant. It's instant. As you tap in with laying that stuff down, your mindset changes. Then the spirit of expectancy is upon you. It's the placebo effect. As you tap in, you already feel more connected because the game is in here. There's nothing that we do. There's nothing that we can lay down. There's nothing that we can believe or not believe that's going to get us any closer to God. We already as, are as close to God as we'll ever be. Now, there are things that you do throughout your life in the process of meditation and walking in the spirit that's going to um, make you more conscious of the power and presence of God in your life, of your calling, of who you are created in Christ Jesus to do good works. There's levels to this, right? But we're not accepted anymore or any, left, any less. But by laying stuff down, is it becomes as an offering before God. So you know what? I'm going to lay this down. Like I said, pornography addiction, you can't take it with you. God, I give you pornography addiction. God, I give you my alcoholism. I give you my weed addiction. Just to show you that I can. You know what I'm saying? Not that, you know, whether it's weed or whatever, alcohol, it's not that God wants to take something fun from you. It's just the fact that, look, man, show me you love me more than weed. Show me you love, love me more than music. I remember fasting music. Why? Because music is something near and dear to my heart. And I was fast. I ain't listening to no music. Just because I love you, God, I'm going to show you I can do it. And it becomes something that's okay. And you kill your flesh. You're always pleasing your flesh. Every time you want something, you do it. Every time you're hungry, you eat. Eating bad foods at that. You know what I'm saying? All kinds of things that, that is in it. But you renew your mind. You retrain your mind by laying this stuff down on the altar. And God answers with fire. The fire consumes the offering. And the fire is the presence of God, the power of God in your lives. Whatever it is that you're laying down as a burnt offering. Our lives are a living sacrifice before the Father. And as we lay upon the altar, the fire consumes us and burns off anything that we don't need to bring into 2019, to bring into t tomorrow. 
that's a continual place that we go to upon the altar of God, spending time with intimacy with the Lord, every single one of us. That never gets old. That's always where everything comes from. Everything. It doesn't come from this podcast. You may get information here. It doesn't come from the music. You may get information there, but you always take it back to that secret place. To go deeper, try it, to see what happens. Take it with you in your own encounter, in your own experience. Uh, Christian says, I've been told a lot about that God uh, made a mistake creating me, that I'm dumb, etc. I do remember old lives, but I just don't talk about it anymore. I learn not just <clears throat> just to pay no mind. Um, I seen a meme yesterday that kind of disturbed me. It was a baby, a newborn baby. And uh, and the baby was like staring, looking real serious. He had like, you know, birth juice on him and stuff. <laughs> and um, he's staring at the camera looking crazy, just come out. And, uh, and they're like zooming in on his face in the meme. And it said, uh, when you commit suicide because you threw with this life and you reincarnate five min minutes later. It's like you try to commit suicide to get like a redo. And it just, the whole past life and I get, to, I get to restart. I don't like this one. It, it kind of takes away the, uh, the drive to get it right this time to feel like you have another ch chance. I don't know that you do. So I'd say, Make the best out of this one. Whatever situation you come, you're in. I've met homeless drug addicts. Mental patients. People who are so strung out on crystal meth that there's police hiding under their bed, that there's demons in, in the walls who have been restored, who have had peace restored back unto them through Christ. You can do it. Whatever situation you're in, it's only temporary. Make those changes this year. Do what you need to do to bring all of this stuff into fruition. The things and the dreams and the visions that you had, they're there for a reason, not to taunt you. God's not riding on the back of, riding on your back as a uh, a donkey with a carrot in front of him, dangling him. Hey, look at your dream. Just out of reach. Just out of grass. Almost. No, that's not God. That's not God. Those dreams are there for a reason. I've seen people restored um, on the verge of insanity who probably need to go to a psychiatric ward. Hell, I'm one of them. And God just takes you and, and molds you into his image, breathes his breath within you, new life. And then you go forth changing the world, undoing all the wrongs that you've done, making peace, making amends, and resetting that karma. And now when you're always freaking out and always having these... Man, God, he, he gives you a new mind, lifts up, lifts up your countenance. That's the type of persona, that's the type of aura that you have on you to be able to heal people. Your aura around people, healing them, convicting them of sin, challenging them to do better. 2019 is here, man. 2018 was beautiful. Greater things in store. Greater things are yet to be done. It's up to you and only you. God's promises are yes and amen. He didn't change his mind. He loves you. He has plans to bless you, to prosper you. It's between you and him, whether you get with him, work with him, or work against him. We've been working against God for too long. Get with him. Get with the creator of dreams. See what happens. It's good stuff. I'm going to go ahead and jump off of here, guys. Let's see. Uh, Taylor is a new person at the end. <clears throat> excuse me, a uh, big fan of the music in the past. I haven't seen much of the podcast question. Do you have any experience with the native American church? I am an Oklahoma and tribal member, though I have never been. Um, I was learning, um, for a while, the, um, Muscogee Creek language. Uh, my uncle uh, who went to a regular Christian church. I mean, most of the, most down here, I mean, it's it's Christianized. You know what I'm saying? They don't have a lot of the um, the ancient practice. The only thing you're gonna get is um, 
during um for the most part during the powwow season right where everybody comes in all the elders come in and they go and they do the stomp dances and they get in dressed in the old old garb and things like that and during my awakening i went to that and it it blew me away i'm in tears the whole time just and i had been as a kid you know and i went back as in my awakening and just just crying just trying to just soaking it in man the spirituality and and everything and um but eventually i knew i heard rumors that they go back into the woods you know during um uh thanksgiving and they have they do the real deal like they really dance around the fire they really do peyote or whatever the case is like i've heard those rumors ever since i was a kid and now that i'm in more of a spirituality i'm wanting to explore the my native american roots especially studying the bible and the true israelites and the native americans coming from the tribe of gad out of the book of genesis and prophecies and i was studying that for a long time and the lord had me on that but um I kept asking around and nobody really knew nothing and finally we were we were um during thanksgiving we were at the welcome center my mom and everybody was in town we were looking at we watched the video they had you know showing you old artifacts and one of the women there told my mom and my mom she just talked to anybody and uh told my mom that uh you know they are doing the green corn ceremony and so uh um she got the info and i was like she told her what it is they go back in the woods and it's at the old stomp grounds where it's like by invite only pretty much um but anyway she got the info i was like shoot i'm going my mom was gonna go back home she was living out of town so i got the info and got up with them and you know asked if i can come bring my friend or whatever and uh we went out there and um we didn't get out there early enough because it's a whole weekend for the green corn ceremony but they i wanted it so bad i ain't gonna lie to you i don't know what they were using but they um were on some type of tree bark they said that was uh some type of psychedelic that would help you to go in and purge out um for that weekend and so all these different tribal dudes a lot of them were like outcast of the of the tribe right because most of them are just you know with the the governmental structure and most of them have embraced christianity and have regular lives but these people like they're trying to you know keep the ancient path so i ended up going and i didn't get to do it but i wanted to but they cut themselves and they'll have like three marks on them and they rub the uh the ash of the bark in it and it causes them to go into this encounter over the weekend and begin to sweat and i just thought it would be so beautiful just to have that that memory you know what i'm saying those scratches to look back down and say man but we went out there and we participated in the rituals we didn't do the medicine um but we did do dances with them and we stayed out there all night. So we didn't do the whole weekend, but uh, it's the green corn ceremony. And I know they do it in Oklahoma. Some of um, my friends who were there, uh, who are, who are from Porch Creek, Alabama uh, in Atmore, they um, have been to the, the green corn ceremonies there. So I would say, look up green corn ceremony. It's a good place to start. Get with whoever's heading that up and see what they're doing. Maybe they use medicine. Maybe they don't. I don't know. But uh, maybe each one is different. But uh, this was something that was real beautiful. And I got to see them go through the process. I got to see them um, sweat it out and, you know, have that hard time and what's coming. Just what a psychedelic does. So it's pretty cool. Um, So, yeah, Uh, Christy says, true seeker, you are inspiration. Holy Spirit is in you. Thanks for sharing that. God bless you and yours so much. So, yeah, thank you guys for hanging out with me, man. I've been on here a while now. What is this? Uh, Two hours and 35 minutes and I'm hungry. I know my daughter's hungry. We got to go. But uh, I'm going to say a blessing. Someone asked if I can bless them um, before we head out. And I will say a prayer. And this is for anybody going into 2019. I'm going to say a prayer and um, receive it. If that's you, man, just close your eyes. Take that deep breath in. Breathing in peace, exhaling, stress, worry, doubt, breathing in peace. Mm, love, grace, peace of God with every breath. It's all about being conscious. It's all about being aware of the breath. Because in the breath is the love, is the grace, is the power of God, the pneuma, the ruach, the spirit. Mindful. God, I just ask you, for everybody listening under the sound of my voice, just to help them to become more mindful of everything 
attitude of gratitude, to approach it with grace and peace, thanksgiving, to enter your courts with thanksgiving, your gates with praise, just praise, begin to praise you and thank you for all the, everything in our lives, the good, the bad, the ugly, letting us see another year. Uh, those who are trying to lay things down, 2019, I just ask you that you give them the grace to lay it down, the grace to move forward, the grace to move ahead. Those who are caught up in any level of people pleasing and it's hindering them from doing what you've called them to do because they're worried about the opinions of others, the opinions of men. Can't please God and man. It's one or the other. Choose right now. Leave it at the door. God, I just ask you to bless them. Keep them with peace in your presence. More synchronicities. More of your Holy Spirit. Moving forward. Bless them beyond their wildest dreams. Let them know that this thing is real. More, more, more of your glory. More of your love. More of your power. In their lives. Manifested. All things fulfilled. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. We'll do it again. Got a lot of really cool guests lined up. It's going to be awesome. Shout out to everybody hanging out in the chat. Oh, man. Uh, Taylor, Christy, Tiffany, uh, Astrid, Laney's World, everybody, Chris Garner, Chris Bars, Tiffany, all of you people, man. Home Sauce, Garner. Love y'all. We'll do it again. Like So if you are looking for a community um, throughout the week, man, we need you. We need you. We need the others. Find the others. Join our Discord. Uh, the link is in the description. If you're listening on the podcast app, if you're watching on YouTube, the link is there. It says join our Discord community. You can get it on your phone. You can get it on your computer. There's voice chat. We can talk like this. I can hear you. Oh, that's you. You're Laney. Wow. You're, you know, you put voices with the names and uh and we're building as a, we're building a community but no funny business no foolishness um but yeah if you're looking to, for like-minded people you want to meet some of these people a lot of them are already there discord community is in the uh in the chat again thank you guys for supporting my work on patreon again um perfect opportunity perfect model to support uh your favorite creators and uh, i'm thankful for all of the support anything that you're able to do thank you and you get a lot of stuff in return my entire uh, library of music is available to you. Um, also discounts and stuff. So the uh, the guided meditations, you get discounts on the meditations and stuff too. So make sure y'all check that out. I mean, if you have a few extra dollars and you would like to try it out, um, the link is in the description to the guided meditations and stuff too. And you can read the feedback. I got some feedback posted on it. So people are blown away. Christy Lee, she said it's the best meditation she's ever heard. I'm just saying... I'm just saying. I'm just saying. She's a psychic healer, man. She said it's the best one. Look, I love y'all, man. We're going to do this again. With that, I'm going to say peace and shalom. I love y'all.